Make no mistake, if you're watching this podcast, if you listen to us often, you work out and eat right, you are part of the rebellion. Look, I'm not being overly dramatic here. This world is organized in a way to make you unhealthy, literally. If you follow the rules and do exactly what you're supposed to do, work the way you're supposed to, watch, consume the way you're supposed to. If you take the pills that they tell you to take, if you eat the way they tell you to eat, you will be fat, sick, unhealthy, and disempowered. In other words, you have to go against the world. The very act of being healthy or pursuing health is rebellion. Welcome to the war. I should have known partnering up with a couple nerds that we eventually <laughs> would do some Star Wars bullshit. Yeah. In the next, <laughs> next thing you know, they build I a should, Death Star. I should have known, dude. This is what Rebel Alliance. <laughs> hey, every time I'm going to keep you guys calling on help, you. You guys couldn't Listen, help yourself. I'm going to keep. First opportunity. To I am going to keep saying this because uh, every time I do. Sounds finally a, on point. There's yeah. a group of people. <laughs> there's a group of people. That I roll and say things like I'm being dramatic. That's not what's yeah. happening. That's not the deal. But listen, it's as simple as this. And That's get, all the sheep, bro. And I'll get to more. I'll get to more. Okay. But it's as simple as this. If you literally just follow the, the game plan, like if you just live in the world like you're supposed to, in the modern world, the way you're supposed to, the odds are you're going to be not healthy. You're yeah. going to be sick. You're going to be weak. You're going to be either overweight or have diabetes. You're, you're not going to feel well. You're going to be on antidepressant medications or anxiolytics for anxiety. That's the default. So what is the definition of rebellion? It's literally going against what everybody else is doing, is, is being different. So this is why if you're watching and you're a fitness fanatic or you just watch what you eat, you don't even have to be a fanatic. You just exercise regularly and you eat healthy how many times you have to explain yourself to friends and family? How many times you've been told that you're weird, have some fun, let loose, you're obsessed, or whatever? It's because you are different. You're very different. Now, here's why this is coming up for me again. There's, I, could, I could go down the list of reasons as to of an evidence and proof as to what's going on. But this war, which is what I'm going to label it, is getting so bad and so crazy. It used to be 10 years ago or more where it was much more insidious and sneaky. You know, it was like the food pyramid and it was like advice on exercise and, you know, and I, and us who understood truly how to get healthy and fit would see it and go, oh my God, that's kind of wrong. That's not really what's going to help. But they've gotten so blatant now. It's so, it's so weird. I almost feel like I'm in an alternate universe. There's this woman. I think that's how she identifies. And I'm not trying to be funny because I, 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 I'm not sure, but she's, a, it seems to be, appears to be a woman. She calls herself on social media the fat doctor. Okay. Never heard of this. And mm. she just did a post, and she's got a lot. Of, here's the scary part. She has a ton of followers on TikTok. A lot of followers on TikTok. There's a lot of fat people. That's why. <sighs> Sad. She just did she did this video that is now going viral. Of course, I got tagged on it where she's she's literally making the case that losing weight is not only a waste of time, it's bad for your health. The evidence is very clear. <laughs> Up to 98% of people that attempt weight loss will have regained all the weight within five years, not... <laughs> <laughs> this is a doctor, Adam. <laughs> this isn't just like some random idiot. This is an actual doctor <clears throat> who's saying it's it's unhealthy. Now, here's, here's how she gets away with it. She says things like, 95% of people who try to lose weight gain it back. True. Or you're going to see improvements in health markers, but it only lasts about a year. True, because people gain the weight back. Uh, that people <clears throat> pursue weight loss in a way that makes them mentally unhealthy. True. Now, that's what we're trying to correct. Yeah. We're trying to correct that, right? Yeah. Um, but what she does is she takes the data, <clears throat> and instead of saying, okay, people are doing it wrong, everybody. There's, there's a right way to do this. It is healthy for you. <clears throat> the byproduct of being healthy both mentally and physically is that you look a particular way. And the byproduct of being unhealthy mentally is a, there's another byproduct that looks a particular way, right? You have a different relationship with food and yourself and all that stuff. Instead of saying that, she's taking this data and she's saying, total waste of time. You're going to yeah. gain the weight back. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Just just go out and just you know follow the, follow the rules, eat everything, <clears throat> don't exercise. It's better for you type of deal. And she's making the case and she has a PhD behind her name. Wow. And it's infuriating. It's absurd. It's infuriating to me because what's going to happen, not because it's counter to the message that we put out, that's annoying at most. It's infuriating because what she's doing is she's effectively, because I hear her arguments, and I know how she, she's appealing very strongly 
to the person who feels defeated. The person mm -hmm. that we try to reach, right? The person yeah. who's like, man, I've tried this four or five times. It doesn't work. And I, I did hate myself through the process. And I was restricting. And I did use exercise as a way to punish myself. <clears throat> She's appealing to those people. She's emboldening souls. their dysfunction. And, and they're going to hear this and they're going to feel like, yeah, thank you. Yes. You know what? This is wonderful. And it's for a second, it's going to feel good to these people to let go of this you know, this, this dream that they had or, or whatever, or, or maybe in a temporary way, they're going to feel better about themselves because the shame is gone, right? They don't have the shame anymore. And she's potentially convincing thousands, hundreds <coughs> of thousands, who knows, <coughs> a, amount of people to never try again. So crazy to me. So sad. Do you, do you think this is attached to the conspiracy theory around modern day slavery? where there's people that put out like that the elite wants you sick, weak and wage dependent. and wage dependent, yeah. right? And dependent on the government medically. And there's this idea that you know, why like putting having slave we don't have technically slaves anymore, but if we give everybody just enough money and just enough government help and, and, and support to barely get by and to do a so make them feel sick, <coughs> get them sick. So they're dependent on our medicine mm -hmm. and our, then, then it's, 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 it's just another form of slavery. Control. Yeah. So it may, instead, instead of my old day, old, old time slavery, where I had to bring you into my home, I had to sh give you shelter, feed you, take care of you medically. If I wanted you to be able to survive and work for me, right. I had to provide all those things instead of doing that. Now we, we give them this really small wage just so they could barely pay for their housing, barely pay for their food and barely pay for their medical and then make them feel like they're independent, but really they're dependent on us. There's a quote. Do you, do you, do you feel, do you feel like that's all? Well, I don't know if there's like this big plan, but I, I will say that there's uh, all the incentives point in that direction, right? Like I've talked about this before. There's every market that I can think of would suffer terribly monetarily yeah. Uh, the profits would go down if everybody if you, suddenly became healthy, yeah. not just physically, but mentally, spiritually, right? We just consume things differently. We don't consume as much. We don't need as many distractions and, and that kind of stuff. Like some of the, the best things you could do in life are free. <clears throat> um, and so it would hurt a, a lot of people. But there's a quote, I think uh, Bastiat said it. I hope I'm saying his name right. So it's something like, um, none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. Because mm -hmm. now there, you don't even know. You don't yeah. even know that you're being controlled. You don't even know that you're. Well, dependent. that's the, that was the point, right? That, yeah. and, and a lot of the there's there are a lot of people that subscribe to that. The, you know, they you don't even know, and you think you're independent, but in 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 reality, you're as much or more of a slave than during slavery yeah, times. When you think about it, and the like, the more you think about the direction that we're going for both what you're saying, like trying to keep people people sick, where the medical system everybody wants medical government to pr provide all that for us. Then you see what's happening in the housing market. I mean, if if the Fed drops the rates three times this year, like they're saying, you're going to see a run on real estate again. And then- You won't even own property. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll get to a point where it puts it so far away that then you you are forced to have well, to Well, they rent. did say, literally, they did say, this was a quote, uh, <coughs> you will own nothing. What was it? You will own, own nothing, nothing and be happy. Be, and be happy. happy. Yeah. yeah, I think too. If you what look, year was that? Sorry. That just the, the like, WF. They, 2015 when they like, said that, right? Something like that. I just looked that up. It wasn't yeah, that long, long ago. ago. Yeah, 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 I think it was Is that one of their forums? But um, if, you start, if you look at it from the lens of, um, you know, these, these medical, like a business, um, patients to them are customers in a sense, right? Of course. Because so it, you know, if if you look at bottom line of every corporation, like they're always assessing ways to to keep people on the hook, to keep people like buying products, keep people in, you know, using things. And so that's that is the inherent problem in the medical system. It's it's you become a customer instead of like being treated to be healed. Do you, do you want to know one of the biggest challenges? It was 2016, the the World Health Organization. Do you guys want to know one of the biggest challenges? with that they're trying literally okay they're trying to overcome uh, in the medical industry with um psychotherapy and it's in their use of psychedelics do you know what one of the biggest challenges is mm. this is great so i this, I've, I've obviously been diving very deep in this right <coughs> i went through a round of ketamine therapy it's extremely expensive uh but the data shows for many people um look it up by the way you can look this up yourself uh, on um, treatment resistant depression, PTSD, high, you know, high level, by the way, treatment re resistant depression is literally the kind of depression that there's nothing helps. Right. 
um, PTSD, uh, even complex PTSD, which is very hard to treat. They're showing that people will do a round of therapy with things like ketamine, psilocybin, um, MDMA, I think is the other one, and they'll be cured. So you'll do it once, mm -hmm. let's say two months of therapy, three months, and then you're done. Yeah. And then you're, and they'll come <laughs> test them three years later and they're 10 times better. And the, the challenge in the pharma industry is they can't patent anything. There's nothing they can make money how off. How do we of. make they're money a, off? Yeah, yeah. A customer we, keeps first coming. of all, ketamine, to give you an example, that's the one I did. A compound pharmacy can make it. So you, you can't patent it, number one. Number two, it, it, let's say it was patented you, and you, you bought, you know, let's say six doses and then you're done. Traditional antidepressants are forever. In fact, going off of them, here's what's really crazy. Yeah. Here's what's really crazy. Some of the most profitable pro uh, medications are the ones that are hardest to come off of. And they tell you this, please do not go off your enzeolytic cold yeah. turkey. Do not go off the your side effects. And yeah, there's so many downstream effects. If you go off, it, you could die yeah. in some cases. So <clears throat> now, now again, I don't think there's evil people in control. I just money. think looking at yeah, the money. profits, yeah, money. The, and it, look, the gym, by the way, I'll, I'll attack our own industry. I don't know how many times I have to bring this up. It's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> example. The gym industry is like this. They have gotten to the point where they charge memberships that are cheap, so cheap that they know you won't cancel, but they also know you won't show up. That's the model. So the, even the gym industry, whose job technically is to get you to work out and be in shape, actually the incentive is for you not to work out and not get in shape. So this is what I mean by these markets. So that's why I'm saying this is a war. So you might be not, we might not be firing guns at each other, but it's a war for your mind and your I, body. I mean, the truth is, it's in, it's unfortunate, but it's in our 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 animal nature oh. to to conquer, control, get the top of the hill. And what we see today is just people that are playing by today's rules. It's the same. It'd be, it's not, you know, this isn't a thousand years ago where you would just go over rape, pillage, dominate, and then enslave. You can't do that, right? So how can you, but you, yet, yet you insidious. still have that, that yeah. desire internally to do that, whether you think you do or you don't. And so you do it through the chains and the means that we have today. That's it. Do I you mean, you're old, just playing by the rules. Dude, it, still, it still reminds me of... Um, I don't know. I get this visual immediate, and it's not just because this lady's overweight. So calm down. But it's with yeah. a, an elephant um, that they tie up, right? And oh they, yeah, yeah. And they pretend they, like it's tied to yeah, something. They and give them some, so much lead yeah. way, and so the whole their whole life, um, you know, they they think that they're restricted. That's a circus elephant. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. When they're babies, yeah. they'll tie them up real hard with like hard yeah. to break ropes and chains. And then when they get older, they're just they, they, just mentally conditioned. They use them. a tiny little rope that an elephant could easily break, but the yeah. elephant's been so conditioned. Do you guys know that? That's what I feel like your average person is, though. You, you know, we're just getting yes. inundated with this propaganda and and all of these means to help, and and you might feel some temporary relief, but now you're just you're literally stuck in this in this trap. So it's also in our nature, though, to rebel, and so there is this hope. Like, and I know I was teasing you about how you, you have to be aware that you, that there's something going on. Well, that's, that's right. The so the the first part is the so before the rebellion is the great awakening. Yeah, right. The before the rebellion is the ever people finally, and I feel like it's getting that way. You know, I it feel like, does. There's, you know, there's some pushback <clears throat> happening. Yeah, I, I, I feel like you know the I, and, and I really think that that COVID kind of pushed a lot more people in that way because I think a lot of people feel they've been duped. You know, oh yeah, and and so I think that we're before the rebellion is going to happen. We have to have the great awakening for we have to have everybody go. Okay, like oh. this is some this Things is some, need to change. This is messed up. Yeah, this yeah. is some bullshit. And then comes the the rebellion. Did you know a long time ago? <clears throat> I want to say it was the English that did this to China. There was like a trade situation <clears throat> and the English flooded China with opium mm. and because they traded with them, flooded them with opium, <laughs> even though they, they limited it or made it illegal in, in, the, in England, knowing that they would become dependent. And it got to the point where well, the emperor- Look at fentanyl. Yes. I know. So and it got to the point where the Chinese Bro, emperor I, had to ban was it. Was that off air when we were talking about that? It was off air when we were talking about the fentanyl deaths and I thought how crazy that it's is. It's insane that people aren't addressing this. It, it, it is crazy. It's crazy that in one year's time there there was as many fentanyl deaths as there was in World War II. Yeah. And yet we don't make a... That, that's crazy. It's not getting... I mean, that's in our history books. Every kid is taught about it. It's so like... Fentanyl is an opioid, right? 
But why is it different than, <coughs> is it just so much stronger? It's way stronger. Is that the deal? Yeah. And, and okay. isn't it, uh, what happened recently where this lady got arrested and, and because her kids got into it oh, and died. No way. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's stuff like, it's so powerful of a, of a chemical, um, that, um, yeah, it's, it takes just a very <coughs> tiny amount to really affect you. And then, so it, it, you can like overdose like really easy. Yeah. God. Yeah. I mean, this is an old strategy. It's, it's not as obvious right now to a lot of people, but you know, you go to like other countries, like these banana republics, they'll have elections and you'll have choices, but they're the choices they want you to pick. from. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It would be like if, if, if mind pump owned, like if we owned all like all fitness and we said, Oh, you have, you have tons of choices. You could get any MAPS program you want. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can't yeah, do anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We gave you choices. You know. well, we have articles verifying it. They're, they're MAPS articles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what if I want to do another program? No, no, no. But you could choose of these four, you know, MAPS. Today's YouTube giveaway is MAPS oh. Anabolic. If you want to win that, oh. leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, our new Mind Pump Trainer course is live mindpumptrainer.com. If you want to learn how to become a successful personal trainer, check that out. Everybody else, you want some workout programs? We got some bundles discounted. You ready for this? New to weightlifting bundle on sale. Body transformation bundle on sale. New year extreme intensity bundle on sale. Body transformation bundle on sale. All of them discounted. 300 to $350 off. If you're interested, interested go to mapsjanuary.com or just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Hey, since Doug's not in here, we can stay in this lane without him getting all pissed off. But <laughs> what do you think? The Vivek stepped down. I stepped know. down. Smart. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, smart. I'm, I'm a little bit torn, though. I mean, I was like pumped. He was the guy for like him. Yeah. But he was going to divide the spoke, votes, right? Yeah. I mean, it was inevitable that 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 he, Trump has too much of a strong base that he he inevitably is not going to win. And all he was really going to do, I, I, his he's, his he's bowing smart. out speech was great. I yeah. mean, I really felt like he. He did it the right way, and his and his. And you know his, what he's doing, right? <clears throat> I mean, it's very clear. It seemed, he, he's by the way. Vivek, you think he set himself up for VP? You think that's what he's no, doing? He set himself uh, up 20, for twenty twenty eight. Yeah. Oh, okay, hundred percent. Okay, because uh, <clears throat> Trump has such a uh, like crazy following. I don't know if it's enough to have him win. Definitely enough to for the primary. Yeah, no one's going to touch him. But uh, when Trump, if if let's say hypothetically Trump wins second term, he can't run again, right? That's in the constitution. Right, right, right. Vivek will be the guy that there that those followers will go to because yeah. Vivek treated Trump well, said nice things about him. So explain to me why why wouldn't uh, Vivek be as VP and why would not Trump pick him as VP if they were that close neck and neck? People like he could, he could yeah, just could. like well, I know why, but that. I mean to me that's like the odd that's even more. You think that I would him think that, waiting yeah, for he, next year is going to set him up. Him being the VP would set him up even more. It sure. would. It would. So like why would that? Why? And because, I know he said that early on that he didn't. He's like, no, I'm running. I'm not going to be. I know he said that he wouldn't be his VP. Do you know there's speculation that uh, <clears throat> that Trump may make Tucker Carlson his VP? <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, we're crazy. just one more step closer to what oh, I always said of like crazy. just characters, TV characters. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, one more yeah. step. I mean, I I mean, I'm waiting for the Rock to put his name in the hat. Like, well, it's just, he's it, already been considered, right? Like, yeah. there, he was. I, I think he's actually had an interview where he was like talking about like seriously look good getting into politics. I'm like, Oh great. Here we go. I mean, that's when you know there's something wrong with the way we do things that where it's, it's, and it's always been kind of a popularity contest, but it's getting so bad now that it's like, it's truly just going to be people. Celebrities. Who, yeah, yeah. Celebrities. Like, would you, it's, would you really want a celebrity well, running? No, the pedigree has gone way down. <laughs> oh, I mean, like in terms of aspiring to be right, it used to be like war. Kids. Used to be like war generals yeah, and things like exactly. That. Yeah, 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 you yeah. actually had to do something, you know. Like you had to be like. I mean, granted, like they're well, I played it in a business movie. acumen and whatever. <laughs> you know, that's going to be the argument. Just I played it in a well, movie. Look, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think building, they said that about Reagan though too, right? Because yeah. he was an actor. Yeah, I mean that's true. Reagan, what Reagan? I mean, he's. Uh, widely considered one of the best modern president presidents and he was an actor yeah but um i don't know if i trust any other actor to i mean let's be honest what are politicians I anyway? always trust Tom. actors politicians are actors yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just ugly actors yeah. that's what they say what do they say someone becomes a politician because they're too ugly to become is that what is that yeah. what they say oh yep. that's funny I never heard <laughs> it's that. the same thing dude <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing i could see that you could just see the actor up there you know crying when something sad happens and, <laughs> oh my god he's so authentic yeah. He won two Academy Awards before. 
So you know? okay, what are so now that he's bowed out? Like, what are the what are the steps? What do we see now between now and, and November time? What what will happen? Well, they run a primary, and uh, and then whoever wins that then is the nominee for the Republicans. <laughs> Biden automatically gets it unless they find a way to boot him. So is it is it? It's almost for certain now that we're going to see Trump versus Biden again. That's what it appears to be. I don't understand how Biden can run though. He's very clearly he's in decline. not look healthy. No. Yeah. No, it doesn't look good at all. And even people who are supporters are like, all right, come on, let's get someone else. He's not doing so well. Yeah. yeah. You know, did you hear the, re like there's insider reports that he's like, he wanders around the White House and oh, they got to medicate him heavily before he does a speech. Well, I mean, it's, it's clear and obvious to everybody. It's not like the president's doing anything anyways. Watching anything. It's, like, <laughs> it's not like they do they anything. They sit down and get yeah, the report. Yeah. yeah You're going like, to say this, do that, do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What if I don't want to? Well, let's, you, you ever learn well, about Kennedy? Well, the Nikki Haley thing is <laughs> yeah. interesting to me. Because Vivek was, did you hear how he was like kind of portraying her as potentially somebody because she's so like uh, pro war? Who, and, Nikki like, Haley? Yeah. Mm. And funded by big uh, companies that, um, you know, that she's getting propped up. And maybe it's like a switching of the hand over here from, you know, the Biden administration over to her. Of course. That's the game. Right. That's the game. So, dude. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised that's the game like going into the next election. I remember as a kid, I remember you know, uh, starting to pay attention a little bit. And I, at, it was right around when Bush, uh, you know, second Bush W when he was president. And then I got, I was very anti like war. Okay. And I still am very anti war, but I remember mm -hmm. seeing what he was doing. <clears throat> September 11th happened. And then they were going to pass those bills, the Patriot act and NDAA. And I, I actually, for the first time in my life, read them and had a friend who was a lawyer and explained them to me. And they said, they're going to do what? They're going to pass this bill. They can go through my all my emails without me knowing. They could literally survey me. They could throw me in jail yeah. with no judge, trial, or jury. And they could keep me there forever and never tell my family. That's under the Patriot Act. It's yep. like, like way at the bottom and like <laughs> tiny, tiny. Print. All of that yeah. stuff. And I remember seeing all that. And then I saw them and then make a case to go to war in Iraq. I'm like, wait, wait. Iraq had nothing to do with September 11th. What's going on? So I was like, yeah. Then Obama, Obama's congressman comes out, right? And it's like very eloquent. And he's like, anti-war repeal the Patriot Act. Yeah. I will not sign NDAA. And I'm like, I like this guy. Yeah. And then he got elected and did all of that. And then some, like and he ran drone shit strikes up. and you know, yeah, yeah. Way, way, way worse. All kinds of yeah, yeah. Way, way worse. And I was, and I remember I was like, so disheartened. I was like, yeah. what is going on? And then my client, but I'm, you know, who was, I trained for a while, Martin, <clears> he goes, Sal, you look at the voting records and their actions and you go back and start looking. And I started doing that. I was like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Oh shit, it doesn't matter. The military industrial complex can do what they do. Uh, I remember him like apologizing to me, like, I'm sorry, dude. You'll never be able to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. fighting about Santa Claus. Oh, so stressed <laughs> out too. It is a lot like What can that. we do about that? He's like, well, nothing actually. Santa Claus out. isn't real. I know. It was terrible. Uh, anyway. Speaking of uh, of uh cool stuff that's happening. We are in the process of the potty training of uh Oh, oh start that right now. Yes. Okay. And I what, have to give lots right, of plastic. Are you not doing the, the three day strategy? No. So yeah. I have to give my wife tremendous credit here. So she super intuitive with kids and like extremely intuitive. And a lot of the stuff she does initially, I was raised very old school. <clears throat> and so it doesn't seem intuitive to me. And I'm like, just what's, why don't you just do it? And she's like, listen, you know, the reason why kids get potty trained so early is typically because they go to daycare. School, yeah, school forces them. And, yeah, and so, and and, they, and it's like, you have to force them, and it's like this fight, and it's like, it's not really a good experience for your kid. No. She's like, your kid will let you know when they're ready. And I'm like, well, what if he's like five? She's like, it's unlikely it's going to happen that long. She goes, but, you know, and, and she talks about like, if he has a mistake, you, you make it no big deal. When he does go to the potty, you don't make it a big deal either. So you're taught to like celebrate like, yay, you went to the bath. And she's like, no, no, we don't want to do that because we don't want him to be a people pleaser as he grows up. We don't want him to think he has to make everything, do everything because you do. You want him to do it for himself type yeah. of deal. So anyway, started the process and she was so on point. It's literally day one, potty trained. Day one, potty trained. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I have to use the bathroom. Goes in there, does it himself. Really? Done. He's had. Now you think it's a little early for you to be talking like this? No, we're now day four. Oh, okay. I was like, we're now on day four. Day one, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, hang I know. tight for a second, dog. Now <laughs> it might be a gift for now, you in your. <laughs> no, no, no. Day four, like he's good. Day four now, somewhere. 
He's he had a couple accidents because he would be playing, and you know, obviously, in his he's he's used to just playing, and then if he has to pee, he just pee, so he can't think about it. Yeah, yeah. So there's been a couple, and he'll tell, oh, oh, and he'll say something like that. We're like, oh, it's no big deal, buddy. It's you yeah, know, yeah. you're just getting used to it. But other than that, he's like, and then when he has to go poo, it's so, so funny. He'll he'll say, you know, Papa, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'll sit him down, and then he looks at me, and he goes. Do you mind if I have some privacy? <laughs> okay, I got close. I got to give him privacy now in the bathroom. <laughs> just so one, I don't. Do, I I, I, just I, it. I subscribe to the the three day method. That was one of the most and it worked for amazing you guys, huh? things I've I'd ever seen. The one thing that I do remember going through it though was, um, I mean, God bless Katrina. I mean, it was it's lit- intense, right? Oh, it's three days. You you don't leave a side. Mm-hmm. You literally have to like she scheduled it out. All hands on deck. No yeah. work. No nothing. She even took. Um, you know, she put his where uh, is like his little fold out plastic uh, table that he plays on all the time, moved it over on the tile, set up all day long games like by the hour, like he's going to play this and he's going to yeah. do this. And he's like, and, the, and then they tell you like the, in the book, it's like every, you remind them every 15 minutes, uh, you just kind of remind them and ask them. And so, cause they're not aware, right? They're just so used to going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was like, it was literally just doing that with him for three, but then after that, nothing ever again. Well, that's great. Yeah. Now, does literally do, from nothing to that. How was it at night though? Any any accidents at night? Max has never had an accident. Wow! I, I was telling Katrina that not that long ago. I was like, you know, it's so weird. Like he didn't even have one accident in his bed his entire life. Now again, granted, I and, and now I'll obviously look, look, reflecting back to my childhood or my siblings, all of us that probably had accidents and stuff growing up, and then I see what happened with us. Is one of the things that Katrina has always done is the last thing that Max does before he goes to bed is she walk, he goes pee. Like right. we make him go to the bathroom right before he goes to bed. And he's, because of that, I feel like he's never not done it. Yeah. Never, and I, now I think back, I'm like, oh, I wonder how many times it was my friend who made, who had a kid who peed the bed or did something like that was they slipped up the, as a parent. Yeah. They forgot to make him go. He went to pee. He went to pee at four and he hadn't gone to pee yet. And then they yeah. go to bed. I'm like, I wonder how many times, that has happened versus, you know, them actually p- wetting the It bed. is so cute, though, to see them not in a diaper, right? Because when they wear a diaper, they're like, they're, you know, the big old diaper butt, they're walking yeah. around. All of a sudden, he just looks like a big like a big kid. He's walking around, he doesn't have a big oh, diaper yeah. butt, and he just... I mean, know. I think that's what would have motivated me to do it sooner is, for you guys, is just simply uh, just getting tired of diapers. I mean, for as a parent. Oh, totally. Yeah, of like having to change a totally, diaper versus totally. like, I mean, you forget, like th- those three days were were a lot. But then once that was over, it was like, oh, finally, you don't have to yeah, worry don't about. Yeah, don't miss those days. Oh, yeah, yeah worry but about. Day, but day one was funny because he didn't want to wear underwear, so he just walked around naked around the house. Yeah, yeah. with a shirt on though. Yeah, he had to have a shirt on. I love so it's just that. the funniest thing. Winnie to the watch. Pooh. Yeah, yeah. you get yeah. the Winnie, Winnie the Pooh look. Yeah, no that's my look. I like yeah, Katrina yeah. always gives me shit for that. Why well, do that? Yeah, I, I do that all the time, and then I always let I always let. Oh, him. you do that to yourself. I do it. I do it. It's like you. It's like I like I forgot it. I'm so always that. coming announced uh, yeah. to your house. Yeah, yeah dude. I'm mean, never just gonna walk in. Yeah. Is this like in your room at night or like around the house? <laughs> I mean, it's my house. I walk around my house like that. Yeah. yeah. Now is the shirt? I got it. This is hilarious. Uh, no, the shirt is I not. I do that on vacation. My, a lot, so is it's, it's very like, Winnie. It's very Winnie the Pooh. But I mean, is yeah. it a short shirt or is it just long enough to wear? Like you see the bottom. of I mean, I don't even. I don't waste my time like figuring out which one. But I don't. You're wearing this shirt. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. They're they're breathing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're, they're, they're out they're out doing their thing and i don't mind him doing it all the time what a difference you know what's funny this is you know the difference between men and women a woman walking around with just a shirt on yeah. would be the sexy. hot oh, oh yeah oh my I, God. I asked for it all the time i think that's why subconsciously why i do it because I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping she's gonna do yes. it i think that's subconsciously i'm like hey let's pick up this trend just, you know what i'm saying yeah, we just I'm wear like shit over and over in the court <laughs> just like just the butt cheek hanging out <laughs> you see you see what i'm uh little working bottom, with over uh, here little bottom sack yeah. yeah when a dude does it that has to be the least attract like if you want to get a woman to be like ew just walk around with just a shirt on yeah, yeah throw some socks on top of that you're not getting any. Yeah. yeah. Now, if my wife walked and around with sandals. No, if my wife walked around with a shirt on and just socks on, yeah. you just added a level now. I love that so look. Oh, yeah. I love that look. That needs to come back. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Did it go out of style? What happened? I think <coughs> I think it did. Yeah. The, the long socks and oh, the, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. You know, I have I have some since you bring it bring up the kids and, and and fatherhood and all that stuff like that right now, I had something that was on my mind. Last night actually Katrina and I were up late talking about this because it just it hit me last night when I was laying laying in bed with him, putting him down. And 
and I was just self-reflecting, like, what's my, what is my greatest fear right now as a father, right? What am I, what am I challenged with the most or what do I wrestle with right now? And when I thought about it, I'm like, you know, your son doesn't like the Warriors. <laughs> no, not that, not that. Yet. I hate that team, dad. No, I, you know what I really wrestle with right now? It's really tough. You and everybody on this podcast has heard me say this many times. You guys know that, like, you know, manufacturing adversity oh, is, right. is like my thing, right? That mm -hmm. I'm like, I want, and I know what I went through, I know what it made me. And I'm so, going through that right now. And so, uh, what I'm really wrestling with is that, of course, I, I said all that stuff and I didn't, you know, I didn't have to really think or have to apply it or really do it much because when he's one, two years old, like, you know, what am I going to do? Like yeah. Push him down the stairs, like yeah. to create adverse. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Like, there's not these opportunities, right, to do that. So here's- What happened to your kid? Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> manufacturing <laughs> adversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He lived. Yeah, he's <laughs> five. He was too soft. He walked oh, so, and then, so then I, so I, I'm, what I'm, what I'm having a really hard time with and I'm challenged with right now is- he, I mean, he's four now, right? Four going on five years old. And he is just the fucking sweetest boy I've ever seen in my life. Like he is just. What's wrong with that? Well, what, what, no, what my point is that, uh, I know that I want him to be tough as much as I love that he's this, this sweetheart kid. Yeah. And you know, it's, and it's not like you're technically either or, but if there's a spectrum of tough and hard and then super loving yeah. my son is over here well, on the a protective yeah. thing right like you're looking at him and i i went through that a lot of that especially with my oldest like you know because so he, yeah he's super like sweet like thoughtful kid and like you know kids would pick on him and stuff sometimes. right and so I'm i've like, been i've been reading this book uh by uh <clears throat> dr nicole lapera i think her name is she's a holistic psychologist i've, I've quoted yeah, her yeah, before yeah. or whatever um first of all adversity is going to happen no matter what yeah. doesn't matter how much money you have doesn't matter whatever but number two, toughness <clears throat> comes from emotion, uh, emotional regulation, being being secure and being able to e regulate your own emotion. What we what we often think of as tough is our our what we develop during trauma, where we can disconnect from shit, and so we think, well, I'm, you know, that's tough. I can go through anything. It's really not really what it is. It's a it's a uh, adaptation to severe trauma. But truly emotionally secure people are very uh, resilient. They're extremely resilient because they're emotionally secure. So that's just that's very uh, that, feels, spoiled, that feels very, that feels very good to hear that. Yeah. Because uh, if that's true, then he does. He is very tough yeah. too because yeah. he's a, a emotionally regular. That's one of the things I love about him. Yeah, is he'll like, feel secure. My son's never thrown yeah. a tantrum. Right. He doesn't scream. Yeah. He doesn't like think about it. This so way. he's got that ability to. And even if he starts to escalate from what, what you would consider normal it katrina and i have been able to quickly resolve it but you don't do that and like he just he shuts he yeah. stops he doesn't he doesn't keep escalating he doesn't push it so he definitely has incredible control of his he emotions also feels very secure mom and dad are always here mom and dad always love me mom and dad love each other um that's what that breeds uh security that's what you want because if you actually look at the data, like Adam, the way you, you know, you, you, you've been through some shit, right? Growing up, you completely defied the odds. <clears throat> in other words, you were able to turn, uh, your sh shit into something that was pro growth, but you're like one in, an, in, in a, in a million. Maybe most people would be addicted to drugs would be, you know, have, you know, th three kids out of wedlock or something like that. Maybe go to jail a couple times. And, um, I mean, you scored the line a few times with cer certain things, but you came out of it. So it's the emotional, it's the security that you're looking for. Yeah, I know. And I don't think that, I mean, obviously, um, I, I know I don't want anything near what I had yeah. in order to do that. But you have to, and I told, and when Katrina was kind of taking the same position as you are, and I was like, I'm not, the, the fear isn't that he, that he is going to be this total pussy or he's not going to have any <laughs> sort of toughness to him. Yeah. It's just that if, I, as a father, yeah. if I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, I, of course I love that my son is incredibly loving and sweet yeah. and all those things. You just like want that. to equip him. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, and I just, I, I, what I don't want is it to be so far on this spectrum that he, he's really lacking on spending. or maybe like you said, oh, he's got it because he has emotional regulations. Well, okay. Well, emotional regulations are, are great. And that's, a, a, and at least I, I've, I've done a good job as a dad and as parents to at least give that. But I, I do want him to have. You want to be growth minded. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this this is a little further down the line because um, you know I went through a bit of that uh, with Ethan, but then with Everett, it's totally different. Like we're, where we're at now, 
is a similar challenge to that. So it's it's mainly his perspective of what is hard. Uh, and this is this is something that's, that's challenging for me because it's like uh, it's a constant conversation of he 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 wants to shut down when he goes through these different spurts of like a new skill for gymnastics or a new thing that he's presented yeah, he with. Quit. He wants to just like lash out and and let everybody know how like difficult it is and 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 so we're having constant conversations with him and trying to get that kind of emotional regulation. Uh, established, but you know, at this point, I'm like, I'm looking at something, and, and it's interesting because uh, our friend uh, Joe Decina actually has like a, a a camp for kids. Yeah, yeah. That uh, it, it's tough. Like it's it's real hard. Like it's it's something like it's not. It's all like constructed in a way where <clears throat> obviously it's it's well managed. Like you know, there is that the overnight one that he does yeah, with the kids, it's like for yeah, twelve yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. So I'm seriously considering it and, and it's mainly just because like everything he described in terms of, he just he doesn't know what hard is yeah yet. like he just he isn't like yes it is hard to train for for sports and it's hard to like go to school and be consistent and do all these things but um i just think like if you're going to create a spectrum of what they know your head is right where my head is stretch it like to this degree so at least he knows like wow and I was able to overcome that's, this that's awesome that's growth minded that's that's So totally your your head is exactly where mine is that's exact same because Katrina said the same thing of like you know he has his own challenge she explained like you know when he's at school and certain kids don't want to play yeah. with him you know, some kids shut down and just go on this, yeah. but Max will go over and go play something. We've taught him too, like when people do things that you don't like, you don't come cry to mom and dad, yeah. you tell them, I don't mm -hmm. like that. And so we, he, he's done like a lot of these things to show that. But then to your point, like, you know, his challenges or what he assumes is difficult is, is really not that difficult. And I want him to be able to see the whole spectrum. I want him to see like, no, this is, you want to see hard son. So this is, this right. is, this had, is hard. I had a client whose kid, they were very successful, well off, and they probably babied their kid a little too much, I would say, but their son was uh, in high school and had developed a problem with weed. This was a while ago. It was just smoking weed all the time, whatever. They sent him to one of those camps. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so no electronics, you got to make your own fire, make your own food. Like mm -hmm. he's not in jail, but, like he had to learn certain skills. And then what they did with this kid, which I thought was, and he, by the way, he came back a different kid, came back a totally different kid. Mm. I asked him, I said, what was the most, like, how was it for him? He goes, oh man, it was so hard at first. I don't want to do anything or whatever. And he goes, uh, but then I, I, then I started to kind of like it. In fact, when I left, I was kind of sad that I left. Mm -hmm. So what was the part mm -hmm. that you found that you enjoyed the most? And he goes, they put me in, they, they put me in charge of, uh, I don't remember how many other kids, five other kids. They put him in a leadership role, yeah, which perfect. he had no business, yep. but all of a sudden he felt responsible yeah. for these other kids. Yeah, yeah. And that was part of the strategy right. mm -hmm. was for him to Smart. see, this is why, uh, like when you see a kid get a job, this is why it's so important for a kid to get a job. You ever see that what happens to a kid yep. when they finally yeah. will get a job? Yeah. They, they start to become totally different. Yeah. My oldest went off to college. Mm -hmm. just doesn't He's working. He's, he's doing uh, freelance shit. But the fact that he's living on his own, taking care of himself, he's come back. And a lot of things have changed in a very short period of time because he's kind of got that responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's kind of, you know, the strategy. Or volunteer work is what <laughs> yeah. people always tell and, me. And I know yeah, that I'm too. like, I know that I'm obviously uh, early, right? Like I said, I knew there was no, there's yeah. going to be real situations when he's one, two years old to, that that's going to happen. And so, but I just, and then I also find moments where um, I, I give into things that I, I really like, and I, 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 I'm challenging myself. Like, is that me who I'm selfishly, I'm allowing him to do that or, or oh, giving in because I like it yeah. or is it, it, am I, am, or is it okay? Because it's something that's good. And like an example that why this whole thing, I went down this rabbit hole was I, I, I went to put him down in bed and the way he sat up and asked me to lay with him for just two minutes, you know? And it's like, I could have went in and the, the, I was actually getting ready to watch a movie with Katrina. So the, I was going to just go in, kiss him goodnight, yeah. say goodnight and go yeah. walk out, which is a, a lot of times what I'll do. And, you know, he's, he sits up and he's just like, daddy, will you lay with me for two minutes? And I'm like, oh, dude, just yes. A hundred percent. I will, you know, and yeah, sure. especially too, um, I, I think about uh, this week we've, we've, you know, come home late this week because we've been yeah. doing the launch and everything like that. And so I've, I've been deprived a little bit of that time with him. And so the way he approaches it so many times is like, how do I say no to that? Or do I even <laughs> yeah. want to say no I to that? If it gets excessive. So, so Jessica gets yeah. caught. I put the kids to bed or put the, our, our son to sleep because 
he pushes that with his mom, like keeps pushing it. So what she did, I thought this was great, right? Where I go in, I'm putting him down. I want mama, please get mama. I want mama to come in. So she'll come in, she'll sit down. I love you. I like you, but mom has to have time to herself and mom and dad have to go out and spend time with each other. It's important that we spend time with each other without the kids around us. And so she explains that to him. And I think that's, that's really good versus the like, no, it's an, you, enough. Go to bed, you know, type of deal. It's like, we need to have time for each other as well. Yeah. And we did. And he let us, yeah. he let us do it. Yeah, yeah. But that is hard because, uh, yeah. he, there will be a day where he will not want you to sleep in his bed. I have to, you, I have you know? to bring up something alarming you guys. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you know, but there's like people who experiment on their own, like out of their own house, like they're running their own little laboratory experiments and things. Um, that's how a lot of that CRISPR stuff is going. Yes. Down. So that was what I thought of immediately when I saw this video, but I was what? just like, Oh my God. Are these where people are implanting electronics and doing weird shit to themselves. Uh, so those people are weird too. No, this one was like, this guy was literally creating like chimera, like new species. <laughs> so he, he spliced together his pet spider, uh, with caterpillars. And what? so he literally created a new species, which was like the spider pillar. And it was so <laughs> freaky looking and just wrong. Is this real? Yes. What? Yes. I'll show you guys a video. And it, it, it's so just weird looking. And it just looks like, a, like it, it's abnormal. Like it's not supposed to survive. Right. And, it, and he goes on and he's like, oh yeah. And I, I go ahead and I released them into the wild. No. And I was doing, just bro? like, What? Like what is happening? That's not it's just on the basic level. It could it could you know occupy space for another species or yeah, like you have no idea what what that's going to do to the environment. Like yeah, the ecosystem. Like do you know how many times we are they going to make weird webs and like you know it was like it was just too creepy to like go oh, down I that see, road. I see what this looks like. Is that uh, everything? Right uh, oh yeah. Wait, what is that? Yeah. So I have a I have is an actual it? video. Oh that, wow. oh yeah, there it is. Yep, that's what? it. What? Isn't that freaky? Yeah, bro. And then it's bro. like eating things and he's got to go to jail. It, he needs to go to jail. This is not acceptable. By the way, you know we've done that so not not chimera weird. That's disgusting. Ugh, not chimera God. weird stuff, Ugh. but like um do you know how many times what? we've brought animals into like not their native habitats and ruined the ecosystem? Yeah. Do you guys know that There's a Japanese uh what fish was that carp or something carp, like yeah that. that went into the swamps and just like took over well you know in hawaii there's chickens and pigs yeah everywhere yeah they have no natural there's predators. no predator yeah. so they put pigs in in so I, I think the law in hawaii is you could kill two a day or something like that they encourage you like mm -hmm. please mm -hmm. please kill some of these pigs because they're everywhere wow yeah. and there's chickens just roaming around the street because there's no there's no natural predators they were brought over there yeah is it and it's is it true that there's no poisonous animals on the islands of on the islands of Hawaii, I, I think believe that's, that's true. true. I think that's true. Yeah. That is true. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. and I didn't even think that there's no predators to kill chickens. No. Yeah. So the chickens are just, of course, the chickens. Yeah, are the I, king. I, you know, of course, when I think about, I never have that's thought why about they're that. They're just though. killing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're just everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're in paradise. They love where they're <laughs> at. Oh, yeah, they're they're living the best life yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, you know how I I, I uh, knew that I was reading this article about. Uh, and it said that Hawaii <laughs> is one of the best places to be homeless. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't the have weather, laws. And they don't have laws against you sleeping on the beach. No. And, yep. Yeah. And wow. you could kill a pig if you want and eat it. Bro, my you brother, could kill a chicken. That's where my brother want. went and did that. My brother was homeless there for like two years. Wow. Two years? Yes. Living out of his van. I don't know. It was that long? Yeah. Two yeah. years? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now he he made money here and there, right? Yeah, he did. Like, so he eventually ended up working for one of those. You know, those. Uh, what's that guy? There's such an amazing dish uh, on the island on the on the north side, and you see him all the time. What is it? It's like spicy shrimp and rice, and so I forget what it what it is. But I was thinking of the local mocha. That's the only thing. I was no, thinking. I like yeah. the local mocha too. But it's anyways. It's if you drive on the island, you see like thirty of these vans. Like they're all and they all serve this this dish in their own little twist and spin on. It's like garlic and spicy and shrimp and rice and so. He was doing that. Yeah, yeah. So I, he ended up getting a job. Now, why did he leave if it was so great? Well, I don't think it was so great. I think oh, he, right. I think he was a young twenty year old guy who thought it would be so great, and then you know did it for a couple of years, and then a, a, you know realized that it's not cheap to live there. I mean, there's it's cheap to be because homeless. of those homeless, 
but to actually go from homeless to like having a place and paying well, that's for that's different. Well, that's just it. It's like what island? And, you know and what so island he was on. Uh, yeah, he was on. Um, uh, uh, what you call it? Um, the big one, Oahu. Yes. Oh wow. Um, so you, you, the idea is that I think you were what I think. I mean, I can't. I don't know exactly what he was thinking, but I would assume, you know. This is awesome. I can go there, start with nothing because it, they are so okay with you camping out on beaches, stuff like that. No one's going to harass me about doing that. And then I could make a life for myself. Mm. But I think what ended up happening is that I think you realized the leap to make a life for yourself from nothing like, like that is extremely difficult, you know, to go from living in your car working out of one of those little vans for, I don't know what he was getting paid wage wise, probably next to nothing is not enough to get you to get your first little apartment. Was and he with the girl or was he by himself? He was originally. And that's also probably what brought him back was uh, the, the two of them ended up breaking up because they went out there together. Because he had no ambition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably. I, mean, like, I don't know if I like He's done anymore. this a, a couple times. Like my brother did that and he lived, went out to Colorado. He's been in Hawaii. Where else did he go? Um, and did the same thing? Yeah, yeah. But I have I have two brothers that kind of lived this like vagabond lifestyle where they just kind of moved to, around and took jobs that like my other brother worked these seasonal jobs. There was a point where I was a little envious. When I was 25, that's I was that was 4 years I had owned my house and you know, I'm 20 25 years old Making and I have I got a mortgage yeah. and you know, I'm working 60 hours plus a week and you know, and here's my brother who's a little bit younger than me, who's like uh, in the wintertime, he lives in Lake Tahoe and he's a ski lift operator and they snowboard on all their days off. In the wintertime, he's a river raft guide, which they provide. Dude, how funny. We literally started this episode by saying that, you know, we're, we're you're slaves of the system. Maybe he figured that shit out. Well, that's my, so he's <laughs> you know very, he he's very, so, yeah. he's very, he, that's actually part of that, right? Yeah. If you talk to him, he would tell you part of that. I don't want to be part. Of, I mean, to the point where for the longest time, he wouldn't even get a, he wouldn't get a driver's like license. Yeah. So I don't want the government to know where I'm at. You know, like <laughs> if the shit hits the fan, we might have to call your brother. You know what I mean? He's got a bunker somewhere. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you were right. Yeah. I mean, now, now he's doing really well, right? Now he lives over in South Lake Tahoe. He's got a good job for himself. He's actually been promoted twice since then. And he's, oh, and he's making a cool little life for himself. But I mean, I watched him do that all through his 20s where he was just kind of bouncing around to places like that. And it was, it was just kind of the attitude of like, I don't, I, don't I would, want. I would love, I, I, I'm going to live in Hawaii one day. I swear to God. Yeah. That's my yeah, favorite place. I, I, I couldn't I do it too. At least, at least like a good four or five months. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I just love the Island weather, man. I mean, I love, I love places like that, but I mean, it's just, it's, I love it because I get to visit it. You yeah. don't like it because it's landlocked? I, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I couldn't do a full year. I yeah. Don't think. I mean, listen, I think, I think we live in the worst state in the United States, but I stay here because of how amazing the state actually is. Not the people, not the politics, sure. not the pricing, none of that, but the state itself, the weather, and then the, how close we are to anything. Yeah, you're right. Is, is there's nowhere else in the I mean as far yeah, as I know so the world. So frustrating about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean like got everything we'd want and you just... there's not a lot of places. There you know that I took a picture one time when this was just a couple of years ago. This is back when I was living uh over in in Monterey and I was right on the coast, right? And uh I was went to our our Chucky house where I played in the snow with Max, you know, up there and then I was laying on the beach 24 hours later yeah. at my house, you know, which is only a, a few hour drive in between. It's just like, where else in the world can you do that? Where you could be playing in the snow one minute and then literally yeah. the same day I could be laying out on the beach and it's a beautiful day. Like it's yeah. just wild that we have that. And there's just, and, and a close proximity too. It's not like I had to drive nine hours to go find well, that. It was a four hour drive. It's crazy. I, I don't know if I told you guys, but I was thinking of going back to Iceland, you know, over in, when it's like not freezing, like 30 below. Yeah. Uh, but we just saw recently that not, not only did they have a, a, a volcano eruption, you know, that was pretty big. Um, that, oh, those volcano tourists. Have you seen that? Yeah. So yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of people there observing it and take pictures, videos and all that stuff. But there was actually one, like, I don't know if it was near Reykjavik, but near one of the big cities that just like opened up as well. So there's a whole nother like volcano that just emerged. And so I was like, okay, I think we're not going <laughs> to like, it's like risk. Uh, you know, it's just not worth it right now. <laughs> Maybe it'll still be there. You know, it'll still be there to visit it. Is that on your bingo but, card too? Oh, yeah, I was like, there's so much going on in the world. Right. Now. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to like add like a little more chaos. When I was a kid, I thought lava was the hottest thing in the universe. You know what I mean? 
Oh, I thought yeah. like lava was hotter than anything, you know? <laughs> so when we were kids, we we're like, I'm going to shoot you with sure, fire. I'm going to shoot you with lava. Logically, like basically everything, anything could melt. Yeah. Right? Like, so it was just, I'd assume. You ever watch those videos of lava where they put random things in lava to see what happens? Like, no. here's a can of Pepsi. Here's a toy yeah. car. Yeah. They're not as exciting it's as you think. It's not that. It just goes over it. Kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of just. Nothing really. Eventually just dips in there. Yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> a, there's nothing that cool about it. It's not that. It's not that great. Yeah. Anyway. So I uh, uh, want to bring up an article that I just read uh, the other day on insulin resistance and its connection to blood viscosity. So you guys know what viscosity means? No. This is thickness. How yeah. easily a fluid flows through the body. So poor blood flip viscosity, not a good thing, right? That means that your blood is not yeah. running through smoothly, but there's a very strong connection to, um, you know, people who have issues with blood gl glucose and insulin resistance and that. Exactly. Mm. What's weird is, and there's, there's all these people now in the, I'd say the wellness space, but now you're starting to see doctors, and scientists start to talk about how our resistance to insulin, right? The, the development of insulin resistance is one of the root cores of all these chronic uh, health issues, including heart disease and how it weakens the arteries. And yeah. the reason why arteries get, get clogged is because your, your body essentially is trying to fortify the walls of the arteries with these plaques. And then if they build up enough, then they get blocked off type of deal. So... I know I'm going to sound like a big commercial. One of the best ways to improve insulin sensitivity, build muscle. This mm -hmm. is um, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. You know, that's what she talks about all the time. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. It's how we're just under muscled. And that's the main cause of all these particular issues. I love that message. I love that that message. And I love that coming from a woman you know, going out there and, and making that message. I think that's one of the things that's going to, I mean, she's blown up already, but she's continuing to grow. It's like hearing someone like say that from her perspective, a doctor and a female is like I have an aunt. so much more powerful than the three Dude, of us knuckleheads that have been saying it. I have an aunt right now that I, 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 I'm having this discussion with because train. She, she's a uh, registered um, dietitian. Okay. And she's getting, she's starting to have uh, like blood sugar issues. And she's like, I don't get it. I'm not overweight. I just started doing yoga. And I'm telling her like, Zia, you got to lift weights oh yoga though gets me stronger I'm like no 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 yeah you have to build muscle and then i said listen look up how many people have diabetes or get heart disease who are not obese it's like 30 percent or it's like a, it's a sizable minority so i said it's not as cut and dry as just being overweight i said you need to build muscle so she's finally gonna hire herself a personal trainer and i said and tell them you want traditional strength training not the kind where you're going all over the place. I'm like, you literally start training like a bodybuilder. Watch what happens to your blood sugar levels. Watch what happens. So, you know, fingers crossed. She follows through and we'll see what happens. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of trainers, how fun has it been talking uh, yeah. to the coaches and trainers? Oh, yeah. This oh. is obviously... For sure. Uh, this episode's airing past when we're done with the whole thing, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Doug? Yeah. You know, it's live. It's with, you know, with, the, with the the live th broadcast. Yes, we're done. But okay, we're, okay, I'm sorry. But the, pro yeah. the but the, the the course that we have is out there. That's out there. But yeah. we did a live broadcast uh, to trainers and coaches, <clears throat> and um, so far the reception's been amazing. Ten thousand people signed up for it, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's been so fun. Yeah. Talking yeah, I, to those, talking to trainers. I mean, I'm, I'm. It brings me back to the gym days. You know. Oh yeah, it gives you that same feel. I'm as, I'm also super motivated to create a product that um, is consistently evolving, right? Like one of the things that what I love about all, all you guys is that we're, we're so committed. Like we want to win. We want to be the best. We want to do that so bad that like, that's our, our commitment to all of the trainers that have registered already. And that have already started the course is that you get in and you start with us now and you're forever grandfathered into that, that portal. And we are we're gonna, just going to keep adding, we're going to keep building it. and you like, never you don't pay a dime and like more. we did of course we spent the last year and a half building this out and brainstorming we had uh, uh, groups of trainers go through it and tell us things it's like okay are we we think that we covered all our bases we know that it, the inevitable happened people were like oh man i wish you talked to some about this or i wish you would did something for this and like that's our goal our goal is okay we put out what we think is the best thing that we can put out we know the inevitable is going to happen where people will give us feedback saying they want more of this or wish it had this. And then our goal is to go back and to if, bolster it and make it that much if better. If you're a trainer or you want to be a trainer, this is the course. That's what it is. It's a course that teaches you how to build your business and be a damn good trainer. 
It's what we used to teach our trainers. Yeah, and it's not it's not what everybody and the, again, this is the motivation behind us, right? Is to kind of disrupt the space because there's a there's a massive uh, amount of money that's flooding into this the the marketing side for training, and there are all these pitches of make this much money in 30 days, and it, it just it's so it reminds us of the weight loss in the yeah. for it, like you know take this pill or do this in 30 days and you know you're seeing the same thing ironically right mirrored on the targeting the coaches and trainers mm -hmm. of these quick instagram hack or do this for funnels and it's like no like if you're going to be a really successful if this is going to be for your life this is going to be your career this is what you want to do and you want to be really good at it it's not going to happen in 30 days. No. Just like getting someone to lose weight, be healthy for the rest of your life is not going to happen in 30 days. And even if it did happen, it's not the way you want it to happen because it's not going to be sustainable for the rest of your life. The same thing goes with building a sustainable business you in, build this, a career. in this industry. Yeah. If you want to build a career, I'm not going to give you a hack on how to make $10,000 in the next 30 days. What I'm going to do is give you the tools and the resources to be great and to chase mastery in this in this craft. And that is the... And, and you know what? It's probably not going to sell as much as somebody who's guaranteeing a certain amount of dollars in a certain amount of days. But what we know, just like when we started this podcast and we put out what we put out, like in the long run, it will survive. It will be better. It will do I'm well. I'm hoping that eventually yeah. it's big enough to where the consumer last. The consumer's going to know the difference. Are you a mind pump trainer or not? Yeah. yeah. And then that's going to be the their determining factor. It's mindpumptrainer.com, yeah, yeah. by the way, for people um, who are looking to, to look into it. By the way, I got to say, I have been, you know, I'm on this pr this journey of reducing and then eliminating things that I use to distract myself from myself. This includes social media. This includes uh, substances. And caffeine is coming up on the horizon. I'm terrified because I have such a, ter I have just this relationship with caffeine where I love it. So I'm reducing it significantly. And the, the Organifi Red Juice is saving my ass saving my ass the withdrawal is mild hmm. it is not the yeah. same withdrawal that i would get before where i was like oh my god if i do this i'm not gonna be able to work for a week it doesn't feel like that at all yeah uh that red juice is a, i know remember you brought it up i, I just, tried a little yeah, bit it's no, my favorite no splitting way headaches <laughs> no <laughs> dude. Remember, dude now i'm doing two things thing. i'm bumping my sodium uh, for that but i'm not headache prone like you are yeah. um so bump my sodium and then I'm going, if if I want, it, for every- Every time you want it, take the red juice. Yes. That's for how every 200 it. milligrams of caffeine, I'm going with a packet of red juice. And um, it's re it's remarkable how much it, it reduces the withdrawal. I don't feel, otherwise what happens is I crash yeah. and I feel worthless. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm not, that's not happening yeah, yeah, with that. Yeah. So good stuff. It's funny that they don't, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why I, if I'm, you know, we should talk to Drew because we have a relationship with him. That, that, that to me is a, a smart way to market that product. Although like get off caffeine. Yeah, yeah. But maybe that's because that message isn't popular enough. Right. Maybe the, there's, there's not a message around yeah. like, Hey, you should probably cycle off caffeine or reduce consumption. Even if your plan is to never go there's fully too much off. Ties to productivity. Right. Know, with people in their mind. Exactly. It. Yeah. But exactly. I mean, I, I, it's something that we've been promoting on here for a long time that, you know, be, be aware of, how much you've scaled that up to it's probably in your best interest to reduce consumption even if it for the bare minimum is just to save money and to enjoy the effects of it because even if you're like i don't care if Dude, i take half when you go off and then you take a little bit yeah. it's mad you know who's i want to get into doug's level i was hanging out with doug saturday he says if he has like 30 milligrams right yeah even less i can tell he wow. can, yeah. that's yeah. it like green tea will give you a kick yeah, I'll get a little buzz. That's but, Katrina. But it depends on the source of caffeine, too. I think green tea less so than ca coffee. Yeah. For example, if I were to drink one of these cans of coffee or say like a rock star and just have like a, a couple sips, I'd start to feel it. Wow. Yeah. 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 See, I'm at the point now where now I'm okay with 200 milligrams. But just a week ago, I couldn't go less than 300 for a dose because otherwise I would feel like shit. So now I'm at 200 and then it's going to go down to 100 and then it go down to 50 and then down to zero is where I want to go. And then I want to be off. There was a time in my life where I had no caffeine. It's when I was hardcore in jujitsu. Oh, really? Yes. And the reason why I went off caffeine was because caffeine gets you amped, which is great for strength training. For me, it was not good for stamina. If I push stamina, the caffeine gives me, makes me out of breath. So I, I went off caffeine and I remember I was off for years Oh, wow. and I felt amazing. I remember be, thinking like, wow, I feel so good. I'll never do this again. Right. Of course, 
Then you have a little bit, and then it feels like this crazy drug. You feel amazing. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, got to break those chains. Yeah, I don't know if I, mm-hmm. I can't. I can't tell you the last time that I had you know more than a couple months off. I mean, I've done that a few times, but I can't remember having like a six month or a year period of like no caffeine. Be interesting. I don't see. like the fact that I feel dependent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Hate that feeling. Yeah, yeah, I, agree. I don't want to be dependent. I mean, that's mm-hmm. uh, honestly, that's like, I have nothing against like a lot of stuff. Like we, uh, we, oh, I've openly talked about different drugs, things like that. Yeah. Like I'm not, but you don't like the feeling of like, yeah, I, I got, have to. I don't, that's what bothers me more than anything else. It's not even the, Oh, cocaine. Oh, marijuana. Oh, Kratom. Oh, it's like, I don't even think yeah. like that. I go, I don't ever want to be dependent on anything. I don't give a shit. I don't care if it's sugar. I don't care. Yeah. If what, it's like, I don't ever want to feel like that. That's what motivates like it, me. Like it owns you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm with you. All right, so today's shout out, I actually talked about some of her work, um, Dr. Nicole LaPera. The book, How to Do the Work, really good. I'm about halfway through it. Um, good stuff if you want, if you're like into personal growth and healing, go check it out. All right, everybody, the time is now. The war is now. Let's start this rebellion. If you're a trainer or a coach, Mind Pump has finally released. We finally made a course for trainers and coaches. Literally, it's designed to make you successful. Better client success, better monetary success. Build your business. Over 40 hours of video instruction in there. And when you sign up for this, you pay one price. You never pay more again. We're going to add to it every single year. We're going to add more stuff. It will become, over time, the most robust course for trainers in existence. And again, you pay one price, you never pay more again. By the way, because it's launched, it's $200 off, and you get a bunch of free stuff. Prime Pro free, Prime free, Mods free, Guides free. You get into a private group in Facebook for just trainers and coaches for free, and you get a chance to get invited over here for a live training at Mind Pump Studios. Anyway, all that's happening. It's brand new. We're very excited. If you want to learn more, go to mindpumptrainer.com. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Sean from Washington. Sean, what's up, man? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? It's an honor to be here. Thank you. I appreciate you guys taking the time to go over the question I had. You got it. All right. And make sure you guys can actually hear me. I'm sitting out in my car, so hopefully my uh, my audio doesn't cut out on you. Okay, okay. we got you. Yeah, you're good. Cool. So uh question I had, and I, I, I think I've kind of done some digging on my own through your guys' past information that you put out and just research on my own, but is there such thing as too much protein that I intake during my day? Um, my, my reference kind of is where my targets are at. I'm supposed to be at about 2,600 calories for the bulk that I'm on, which is about 208 grams-ish of protein is what I have set. And I'm usually in the realms of like 240 to 250 at the end of every day, which I don't have any issues as far as no, not affecting sleep, no digestion issues, no odd feelings whatsoever. Just wanted to know if like, is that too much to intake for myself? No, I mean, unless, I mean, some people have digestive issues when they'll start to eat a lot of protein. Um, but no, there's, you're, you're perfectly fine. Where are you what? getting this protein from? Uh, pretty much all whole foods. I do have one shake a day. Usually this depends in the morning at night. And then if I have a a meal in the middle of the day, just because I'm traveling back and forth, there's usually a protein bar, but that's, it's usually all animal fish, all high quality protein. So every day you're hitting 240 grams. Cause that's a lot. Listen, I weigh, I weigh about 210 and I, it's hard for me to get 200, uh, grams of protein a day. So that means you're eating like what, 50, 50, 60 grams of protein, multiple meals a day? Yeah, usually I do one meal in the morning and then a, a larger, I call it my feast just because it looks enormous at the end of the day, but basically one meal in the morning, a middle meal in the day, and then the big dinner at night. What does that macro, what does that protein breakdown look like on those meals? As, uh, I haven't tracked individually, but majority of the protein will be at night. I'd probably say, upwards of 60 to 70 percent will be at night how do you know you're eating too much protein if you don't know what you're eating for breakfast so this is interesting so you're counting just total but you but you don't know what breakfast lunch and dinner is i have it tracked i just don't have it in front of me to give you all the the correct information okay okay but it sounds like you're eating like a pound to a pound and a half of meat for dinner like you're having a big massive 
If I weighed it, I'd probably say you're right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, look, here's a, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, you're probably not getting any additional benefit from going above 200 grams of protein, but you're not going to get any detriment. However, okay. there may be some benefit from bringing up carbs and fats because those also provide some benefit. Yeah, there's better. the better question here is, how do you feel your workouts are, and how is how's how is the bulk? How's the bulk? He already said his yeah. digestion's good. How's your how's your progress? Are you are you bulking like you want? Are you seeing the results that you want? Um, I, I'm getting there as as far as I can tell. The only issue is that I know usually during a bulk, and it's the first one I've ever done. So okay. usually you'll put on weight, which I have, but it's not a lot of weight. And I've only I've been doing it since I think I submitted the question in October. Oh, wow. somewhere around there and i've probably put on a, a pound or two since then and it all seems to be in the correct areas because my no no waste expansion of any sort really that i can tell no major yeah i think you're well, other so, areas so it seems like it's going the right way just go ahead sorry so no problem so since october you've been going on a bulk and since october so now we're in january you've gained about one to one and a half pounds Give or take, yeah. Okay, you you could go way up in calories. Yeah, that's that's that's. Now, how's your strength gains in the gym? So they are increasing, but again, it's at the same. It's a slower progress than I I think it's supposed okay. to be. I well, mean, okay. let's look at his workout. Well, too. There's, well, there's a couple of things here too. Let's <clears throat> in staying in the diet before we go over to yeah. workout is if you if you feel satisfied, you're enjoying your meals. You're feeling your strength go up, even and even though the scale is only moving up a pound and a half, and it's a slow process. But if all in all, you're you're happy with everything, uh, you're doing great and you're fine. You could probably accelerate mm. the 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 weight gain if you wanted to by, and that's where probably the recommendation of carbohydrates would come from. Like, and I know that was in the, part of the question. Like everything that you've ca you've read shows that you know they're, yeah. they're telling you, you should have more carbs for this bulk or whatever, and and. Carbs are, are going to be less satiating than the protein. It'll be so, easier to eat. Yeah, it'll be easier to eat more calories. And so, if you would, if you want to accelerate the bulk, you could. That would be the direction I'd push you in: is more carbohydrates. If, if you're happy though with the results and where you're going, then I, I actually there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. You're at tw you're at roughly twenty five to I did the math so between twenty five to twenty six hundred calories. Thirty two years old, six foot two. You gained a pound in like three four months. You need to be closer to like. 32, 3,300 calories, in my opinion. So you're just not eating enough. What happens gotcha. when, you're, when your protein is high, but your calories aren't high enough, is that that extra protein is, is being turned into energy like carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So they're, you're taking that extra protein and, and you're, you're getting enough protein. Your calories are enough in the sense that you're not losing weight, uh, but a lot of that protein is getting turned into energy. What would be better at this point? Would you bump your? I would go up another six, seven hundred calories at least, and then take it from there. You should see. I don't want to say should, but I would be happy with in a in a three month period a nice five to seven pound gain um, on the scale. Oh, at least that if you uh, bump them that yeah. high. Now let's talk about your your, gotcha. your let's talk about your workout. Uh, what are you following in your in your routine? I, I do a home gym workout. I've got uh, bench press everything there and basically i do resistance and strength three days a week and then every other day is walking or yoga is that that's all i do are you following any of our programs uh, you know i've since i found you guys i can't keep contemplating getting it it's just i haven't been able to budget anything to get it yet but it's on my radar to do okay well we'll give you we'll give you maps anabolic you need to follow a good program um, a bulk is only going to work so much. You have to send the right stimulus. I don't know what your workout looks like, but I'm obviously very confident in our in the program maps on a ball. Follow the three day a week version. It's got an at home version. It's got, gotcha. and it's got you have a you have a barbell and a, and a rack or just dumbbells. Yep, yep, barbell, oh, dumbbells. You follow the full program. You have bar. At home. Yeah, you you're, you'll follow the the normal version. Three days a week. There's a three day or two day a week version. Do the three day a week version. Do the trigger sessions. Get your calories closer to 3,200 calories, um, and I would do that in both fats and carbs. If are you finding it yeah. tough to eat more? Or are you like super like Are you like stuffed? Usually at the end of the day, if if I hit that upper limit of that protein number, then yeah, usually I feel completely full. But it doesn't again, it doesn't affect anything. And that was my other question I was going to ask if I had a chance was, am I eating enough calories? Which you guys have already answered no. that one is no. 
Yeah, yeah. you're eating enough calories to to be okay. But if your goal is to gain, you got to probably you. It sounds like you also got a relatively fast metabolism. Um, although 2,500 calories is not not that much for a man your age and size. Yeah, I would go up to 3,200 calories at least. And um, gotcha. Yeah, and you you can add more rice, uh, potato, fruit. You can make smoothies. If you can have dairy, I have, I've said this a million times before on the show, if if milk doesn't bother you and you digest it well, yeah, need more like protein. you could go, it doesn't matter, it's just calories. You could go yeah. glass of whole milk with yeah, every meal and there's like 300 calories right there. Just the easy ways yeah, to get yeah. more calories. I mean, carbs are easy. So I, just add some snacks in there, dude. You enjoy yourself a little bit. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have, gotcha. have some popcorn when you're watching Netflix at night. You know, are you eating lean? <laughs> are you eating really lean protein? Yeah. Usually it's um, oh. leaner, leaner cuts of meat, chicken, fish. Oh, that's the other thing. No, go, go with the fatty. Things. Go, yeah. Go yeah. 80% rib, go, ground beef. Go ribeye, rib ground beef. Go chi okay. chicken thighs. Yeah. That'll, uh, that'll take care of it. Yeah. Fish, have salmon. I mean, yeah. Go the, go the fattier route on the meats. That'll yeah, help. Too. That'll take care of it. Gotcha. Yep. All right. And we'll send you maps anabolic. Awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. You All got right, it, man. Sean. Yeah. Circle back. Let us know how you do after you go through the program. Absolutely. We'll do. All right, you man. You got it. I'm glad I asked that question. Yeah. I Big am. common mistake people, especially guys for some reason, make when trying to bulk. Well, there's two mistakes. One is they go just garbage food all the time. Two is they bulk with lean meat. Mm -hmm. If you're eating chicken breast or tilapia and you're bulking, why? Yeah. Not only is it going to make everything far more difficult, but you're also eating disgusting cuts of meat that don't taste nearly <laughs> yeah. as good. Go with the fatty cuts. That alone will make a big difference. Yeah. I also want to point out too, though, like there's nothing wrong where you're at. It just it, no. it, like that. The, the, to me, it's like, well, what's your mm -hmm. goal? Like, do you really want to put on some weight or are you just, you're trying to get a little stronger? Like, cause at the pace he's going, he could continually just slowly. He's not at a bad pace. Yeah. He's not at a bad, he looks healthy as shit. I mean, he's 32 years old. He's 6'2". He's 160 pounds. The guy's lean for sure. He's definitely lean, but he absolutely at that size could afford to be eating thirty uh -huh. five hundred plus calories. Oh, I mean, I would. I mean, that's. I was gonna say that, but I would scale it up. You know. Yeah. No, you're 32. right. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. So it'll be interesting to see if he bumps that. What What happens? Our next caller is Cole from Wisconsin. Cole, what's up, man? How can we help you? Not much, guys. How are you? Good. Good. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on, um, and all that you do. I've actually been on before, and this time around, I'm just gonna read off of my question directly because last time I was rambling a little bit. No problem. <laughs> All right. All right. So I've been dealing with some imbalances in my shoulders for a while, uh, which kind of got confirmed when I was getting measured for a suit and the tailor told me that my right shoulder sits a little over an inch under my left shoulder. So my right shoulder is a little bit lower than my left. Uh, I can definitely see it when I'm doing any shoulder press movements, lateral raises, pull ups, stuff like that. I've had numerous injuries in my right shoulder from back when I played football. So multiple shoulder separations, stingers, which I guess are more of like a neck shoulder type injury. I also broke my humerus up near my right shoulder. So not sure if that plays a part in this. Um, never really addressed it. Uh, but now that I'm getting older, I just want to make sure that I'm taking care of it. So it doesn't just get worse. Currently having a lot of tightness in my traps, neck, upper back, resulting in me feeling the constant need to crack my neck. Uh, and then other times when I like pull my shoulders back, I can feel a lot of popping in my neck, chest, scapula area. Um, so I'm wondering if this is something I can fix myself or should I go see a chiropractor, physical therapist for it? Uh, and then as I'm working on this, how do I find the right balance between fixing the issue and then continuing to strength train? I've run map symmetry a few times and that hasn't actually fixed anything. Um, I'm actually running symmetry again right now. And based off of a similar question that you guys had asked a, a few months back, I have pretty much a pretty dr uh, dramatically reduced the weight I'm using and I've been focusing on my form and pulling my shoulder blades back uh, for any pulling movements. So I do have an update. Um, I actually did see a chiropractor that practices back, uh, active release therapy. And that was after I posted this question in your Facebook forum. So that was helpful. Uh, but after a few days, the, the same issues came back. He said that structurally everything seems fine. But he said that I do have a lot of, t of nerve tightness in my shoulder. I was just going to say that. I'll yeah, I also brought. Uh, I also bought Maps Prime and Prime Pro during the Black Friday sale, but I haven't really dove into those quite yet. Uh, I wasn't really sure how to incorporate them with um, strength training, 
and I'm doing, and then I guess my ADHD is also so bad that when I start trying to look through them and read through everything, I just get distracted. And then I go back to doing what I always do, which obviously hasn't helped. So any tips on how to use those programs with a program like Symmetry? Um, and then before you guys give me advice, I want to give a quick shout out to Margaret on your team. She was super helpful via the live chat on your website and answering all the questions that I had um, about Prime and Prime Pro. So yeah, that's great. what I've got. We love her. Yes. All right, Cole, Appreciate that feedback. Too. I was just going to say before you said it that this sounds like a nerve issue. So you have now all muscle imbalances technically could be nerve related in the sense that the nerve, your nervous system is what fires muscles. But if there's an impinged nerve or nerve damage or there's a herniated disc that's pressing on nerve, whatever. It's just not going to get the signal. Mm -hmm. And that's what it sounds like. It's what it sounds like is happening with you. Now, you went to see a chiropractor and you noticed some relief for the next few days. That also tells me there may be an impinged or trapped nerve or something pressing on a nerve, which is literally limiting how you can fire your muscles. If that doesn't get fixed, you can do all the exercise you want, but it's like having a cord connected to your vacuum cleaner and you've got the cord you know, clamped Punched off, up, yeah. like, there's, like there's nothing we can really do at that point. So, <clears throat> um, symmetry is still going to be the best prime pro. You could do the shoulder and scapular movements in there, but you're going to need to work with somebody who is a movement specialist who understands the nervous system. A good chiropractor is in that category. Okay. okay. And, and did they have you x-ray? Did they do any x-rays? Yeah, where you? are you, where are you based out of? Uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Because uh, in our forum, it, and maybe Brink has a recommendation to somebody who's over there, because this does matter who he gets. He could also have you do imaging. He could look at the images. Oh, uh, that's true. Virtually. Yeah, he could do, he could assess you. I know he does. He takes virtual clients yeah. on too. So, because here's a deal like, the, the, and obviously this applies to every space that there's good ones and bad ones, but some chiropractors are in the business of having you keep coming back and seeing them, right? They adjust you. You felt really great. You're like, oh man, that helped. But then, they keep coming back. but then they don't give you any exercises or things to complement that or work on that or fix that. And it's just this, come see me every other week or every week and I adjust you and you feel good and you have this need to see him all the time versus a good movement specialist that will assess it, break down what's going on with you and say, listen, these are the things that we need to do in addition to this adjustment if we're ever going to fix this. And so- it needs to be, it's important that whoever you're meeting with is communicating it that way with you or else you don't Cole, have a good one. Cole, if you have, if you have a few minutes here, I could try something with you. It's not going to fix the problem, but it might illuminate a little bit of kind of what's uh, going on. Is there a movement you can do with your shoulder right now that will help? Like, like if, could, is there a way you can move right now where you're like, oh, there it is. I can feel it. Is there something you can do? Um, as far as relieving the No, the not relieving it. Like if I were to tell you, like move your shoulder or arm in a way to where you could tell like there's a problem. Yeah, I think it's anytime I like just try to pull my right uh, like scapula and shoulder back is when I, I feel. Just, do you feel? It, okay, so do it right now and tell me what you feel. Uh, just a lot of tightness. And then I'll even, I even feel just like a pop. Okay. Like a small, a small little pop in my, All right. and it's hard to even tell if it's coming from like my chest or my back area, to be honest. Okay. We're going to, we're going to try this right now on zoom. Uh, it, maybe it won't work. We have to edit this out, but we're going to give this a shot. Is there a wall yeah. that you could stand up against right now and put the camera on you? Uh, yeah, sure. Just like sec. Over here. Yeah, yeah, so you, I want your heels up against the wall. I want your butt up against the wall and your head up against the wall. Uh, okay. Now, I want you to look down just a little bit, and there's a small nodule on the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Can you feel that little Press nodule? Yeah, so you tuck your chin in like you are. Just a little bit. I mean, can you feel that little nodule yeah. against the wall? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to make your neck as tall as possible, like you're trying to pull your head up while also pressing back into the wall. Now what I want you to do is take your palms, face them forward, put them up against the wall. Face them forward. Like, now put them up like, against the wall. No, like, we're not going to do the wall test fully. I'm going to try something called traction. Put your hands next to your sides, like closer to your body. Okay, so hold that. Now put the whole back of your arms, shoulders, nodule up against the wall. Make your head tall. Now while doing that, do you know how your lower, you see how your lower back is off the wall because you got a little bit of an arch? Yep. Simultaneously, Try to flatten your back against the wall. You're not going to be able to, but I want you to try. Yeah. So it's like you're trying to do like a little pelvic tilt. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now, I want you to pull your shoulders down, pull them down while keeping your arms. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. Pull them down while making your head taller, while pressing your low back into the wall. So do them all 
at the same time. I can't be with you because if I was with you, I, I yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> keep going, keep <laughs> yeah. going. Pull the shoulders down while keeping the arms in contact with the wall. Keep pulling them down. Pull your head up at the same time. You're doing it. You're doing yeah, it. And, press, like, and what you were doing. Shoulders back and I keep my back flat. You're not going to be able to, but you're going to, I want you to try. Keep doing it. Don't give up. We got to hold this tension. What we're trying to do is imagine you're making your, your spine longer. And the way you're going to make your spine longer is by pulling your shoulders down, pulling your head up and flattening your lower back all at the same time. And if it feels hard, that's because it is hard. Yeah. So let's hold that. Yeah, you're tugging keep, from all those different keep points. Keep doing that. Keep all those points. Hold this for about 10 seconds. You ready? Here we yeah. go. Okay, hold them all. Head tall, shoulders down, shoulders down, shoulders down, Try arms it. up against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Flatten the back, flatten the back. Hold it. Okay, come back to your chair. Turn your camera. <laughs> We're going to try something real quick. I felt, I mean, I felt a lot of, um, I mean, I felt the stretching and some relief there for okay. sure, but it was now, hard to keep the back flat. No, yeah, hard. very hard. Now move, move your shoulder the way you did before. Let me know if there's a difference. Yeah, okay. I think there is. Okay. I definitely no pop, but that's not something that happens every time, but it definitely feels like there's some relief. Okay. So what we did is we did what's called traction. Okay. But we did it actively through movement mm -hmm. and traction essentially is if you think of the spine, the bony parts of the spine, and then you have the disc in between, we just create a little space in between them. And if yeah. you noticed benefit from what we just did, that's a very strong indication that there's a nerve that's being impinged because that space opened up a little bit and allowed the nerve to breathe. fire a little more freely. Yeah, breathe a little. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I just showed you is excellent to practice throughout the day. However, Kay. your best bet is to work with someone that can be with you, that can move you through that. Because if mm -hmm. I was there, I probably would have made it better. Yeah. And then we would have improved upon yeah. it if we did that every single day. A few other Eldoa moves would be great. Too. Yes. I'm also, we have a video on our YouTube channel uh, where I'm doing a Eldoa, E-L-D-O-A, Movement, that's also another way to create traction through the fascia. Yeah. And then in the forum, tag yeah. Dr. Justin Brink, and uh, he'll be he'll be far better than I am at identifying this issue. These When you get these movements, okay. I, I really love the Eldoa. I'm glad you went the Eldoa route because we do have a series on there on the YouTube channel. So if you do Mind Pump and then Eldoa, uh, you'll see a bunch of videos. Watch all those. Or probably all, most all of them will be beneficial yeah. to what you got going on. And that this just needs to become part of your lifestyle, like all the time working on this, most certainly before and after lifting weights. So yeah. your, your goal should be to try and do it throughout the day, all yep. the time, every time you're aware of it. And then also every yep. time you go into a, the map symmetry, you're starting it and any of that. And then, of course, getting the the uh, you know guidance from someone like Brink would be yeah. phenomenal. And when you get good at it, then what you'll be able to do is while you're sitting, you'll be able to create that traction. Like you can't do it right now. It was hard against the wall. But mm -hmm. if you keep practicing it throughout the day while you're working or whatever, you'll be able to create that traction and just continue. Because what happens on a nerve is if it's constantly impinged, it's going to cause inflammation. If you keep releasing it, then it probably won't become an issue anymore. Okay. Um, well, I love that you talked about, you know, before and after you lift weights, because that was a concern of mine is that you guys are going to be like, oh, you can't lift weights anymore. No, you're fine. No, okay. you're fine. no you still can't. Um, no, you're fine. So uh, just a kind of off question that I had. I'm, I ran symmetry. I'm running symmetry again. Could I, I have a few of your programs. Could I do like a maps anabolic and, and make that a, uh, like a bilateral type, uh, you mean unilateral. program. You mean, unilateral. you mean unilateral? Yeah. Sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah, you can, but look, okay, so you know, the feeling that you just got with what we did against the wall. Yeah. If you could, tr if you could mimic that feeling when doing rows and overhead presses, then yes. If you can't, then no. Because what'll happen is you're going to end up impinging the nerve every t nerve every time you do an overhead exercise or a row. But if while you're doing a row, you could create that lengthening in the spine where you kind of give yourself a double chin, drop the shoulders, and create that same feeling, which you might not be able to do right now. But if you practice enough times, you will. Then I'd say yes. And 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 also keep in mind that following symmetry is not going to hurt you and your gains right now. Like literally following symmetry while we work on this. And then yeah. when you start to feel good, then bounce into the other programs. Like yeah. for right now, this becomes a, a priority because we want to make sure we fix this and get yeah. to the bottom of it. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, if you were my client, we would run a, a symmetry protocol while we're always, we're, while I'm drilling. Literally every time you came in to see me, the first 10 to 15 minutes would be that type of stuff. Yeah. Like we would be doing all that and that would be the main focus. And then when we get into our workout, yeah. 
it would be symmetry or even a smaller version of symmetry. It would be primarily focused though on getting your your so the point where you can make little micro adjustments in your posture to always get back in that optimal alignment. Yeah, and, I've had that's a, really what it is. I've had a lot of success with uh, these kind of mild impingement issues, but literally, I would get clients on the floor. I'd have them hold on to bands while they're on their back. I'd mm. pull their head back and hold it for thirty seconds. You know, there's a lot of different ways we would do this, and then over time, it was like we didn't need to do it anymore. Yeah. Okay. And then I don't know if this plays a role in it either. Obviously, I, I sit in a desk all day long. I'm thankfully moving up to the ninth floor next month or a couple months, and I'll have a standing desk at that point. But is like just constantly lean. I would imagine that's not helping yeah, the cause at all. I mean, either. probably not. But if you could sit up right now and give yourself a double chin and make your head tall, yeah. pull your shoulders down. Yeah. At the same time, now you just did a little traction there while you're seated. Yeah, just yeah take breaks and do that, you yeah. know, and figure that out how to just how to don't do overarch your back. By the way, that okay, as you get you, you practice what Sal had you do against the wall more and more, you'll learn to be able to do that right there in your chair. Yeah. Right? Like understanding mm -hmm. that he had you tuck your chin, which is start is aligning your spine. He's having you to reach your head up. So you're kind of stretching it out. You're depressing your shoulders down. So that's stretch. So you can learn to do that right where you're sitting. And it would be amazing to make that part of your hour. Like you just, you, you know, you between calls or emails or whatever you're doing, you know, every time you get a little th and 15, 30 second break, doing it more frequently all the time when you're sitting, standing throughout the day is more beneficial than an hour of attention on it uh, from yeah. a chiropractor or a physical therapist. Like, Cole, so try Cole, and do that as much as you can. I'll show you one more thing, okay? Create that traction right now while you're seated. So kind of sit up tall, bring your shoulders down, rotate your hands out, right? Make right. yourself mm -hmm. tall. Don't overarch your back. So pull the shoulders down, head tall. Now, without turning your head one way or the other, it's it's your, I think it's your right side, right? Bring your yep. left, very slowly. Don't do this fast or you hurt yourself. Bring your left ear down towards your left shoulder. You feel that? A little bit yep. of a stretch while pulling your shoulder down? Okay. Yeah. That's probably going to give you a little bit more relief on that nerve. Does that feel good? Yeah, it did. There you go. We'll, give, we'll send uh -huh. you the bill later. <laughs> appreciate that you got uh it, one last thing would would something like because my gym has one would something like an inversion table help yes yes but the problem is it's passive yeah so yeah. it's just going to create temporary relief but you're not doing it through your own activation but it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing but you got to be able to do this with your own muscles yeah, yeah. otherwise it'll mm -hmm. just go away okay and then the other thing is adam i know you guys it was a recent episode i don't know if someone was talking about like shoulder some sort of tightness, but you talked about getting like a light band in your office and doing yeah. some pull aparts. Uh, that's something that I've been doing over the last few days that seems to help relieve some tension. So too. long as you don't shrug your shoulders. Yeah. Even though what we just did with you will be even more valuable yeah. than that. Yeah. Okay. So you, you intrinsically doing it like Sal just walked you through those L two listen, moves. If like you that, start to, if you start to lift your chin, yeah. And if you start to lift your chin a little bit and bring your head back while doing that, you're going to hurt yourself. You got to keep okay. that head tall. Okay. Sounds right. good. Well, that was super helpful. So I appreciate it, guys. You All got right. it, man. Good luck, Cole. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. See ya. Yep. I, I literally had uh, it's common, dude. like four clients, like exactly. And you know what I used to do with them? I'd have them do that on the wall. Then we'd sit down, we'd mimic it. And then I'd take my elbow and just press here on the levitator scapulae trap area. Yeah. And then I'd have them bring their head down a little bit. And that was like the recipe. Oh. That was I, it. I became a professional that because what he said before with like having stingers from yes. football and oh, like yeah. all the impact. Yeah. And I used to get my rib used to dislocate all the time. Oh, <laughs> it was brutal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's just the kind of stuff you got to relearn how to like put yourself in that good postural supportive position. Our next caller is Christian from California. Christian, what's up, man? How can we help you? Yo, how's it going? Hey. This is real life. It's what's good, going on, bro? man. Hey, big fans of you guys. Thanks so much for all the content that you put out. Um, I've, after listening to you guys, I realized I've been over training and under eating pretty much my whole life. So <laughs> oh, man. Well, I've uh, shifted my mindset a whole lot. Um, let me jump into my questions. Uh, so I'm reverse dieting. Um, I'm currently at, my question says 27. I'm at about 3000 calories right now. Um, and I wear an Apple watch mostly to track my steps and track my sleep and that kind of stuff. I do turn on the workout app when I'm lifting because I like closing my rings and that's about it. And I don't know how accurate it is, but when I, when I do that, it kind of says that I'm burning like 400, 500, 600 calories when I'm lifting. Um, and so my question is if my goal is to hit that 3000 calories a day, 
when I lift, do I need to like eat back those calories that I'm burning or not? Nah, don't worry about it. Yeah, I wouldn't get, I mean, I love tools like the Apple Watch, Fitbit, Aura Ring, all these things like that. I love to track steps and pay attention to the stuff, but I never allow it to be the thing that tell like, oh, it says this many calories, therefore I now need to do this with my diet. Really what I'm using that is just another piece of information or feedback when I when I pull back and I look at like a month worth of what's been going on. Like so when you look at your results over the the last 30 days, are you seeing progress in the direction you want? And then the questions after you ask that question and, and the re answer is, yeah, you know, I'm getting stronger. Uh, the scale is staying about the same. I'm eating more calories. Great. I don't need to mess with anything. But then if you say like, man, I'm getting weaker or I'm putting on a bunch of weight, like then we make adjustments to those, those things, right? Then we add in calories or take out calories or create more movement, but don't allow the, the numbers that the, even our, like our personal macro calculator that spits off a number of calories you should eat. Again, these are all good tools to give you an idea, uh, but don't, don't allow it to, to, to change your day-to-day -day decisions on how you eat. Use it as something that you can look at from a bird's eye view at like the end of the month and go like, okay, let me assess. My goal was to reverse diet. So in your case, you're trying to increase calories without probably putting on body fat, right? And so ha was I able to, the last 30 days, increase my calories from what they previously were? And am I in as good a shape or better shape than I was when I first started? And then that is what should make our decision. Yeah. It, it, what should you look at with your reverse diet? Am I, am I gaining you know, more body fat than I'd like? Am I getting stronger? Do I feel good? Those are the things that matter. Um, not trying to fill in the, the calories. But by the way, the calories you burn while you're active, your body adapts to that so fast. It's not even funny. It, it actually almost mm -hmm. doesn't make a difference except for maybe the first three or four weeks. This is why people, when they try to burn calories off to lose weight, they plateau so hard within yeah. a very short period of time. So how is the reverse diet going? Yeah, Are you yeah. getting success from it? No, yeah, that's been great. Okay. Um, and I think my, my question kind of stemmed from, because I use my fitness pal to, to track everything and I'm pretty diligent at tracking all of my food. And for whatever reason, I think like by default, it was kind of set to when it, when it detects that you've burned calories or you've done an activity, it like automatically subtracted it from like my daily calorie. Mm. Count. And I remember like going through it and I was like, how do I still have 2000 calories? Like I know that I ate this much yeah. <laughs> and so I went back and looked at it and I was like, oh, it subtracted my like active calories. Does that mean I need to eat that back? No. And so that's kind of. Yeah. From. I mean, it sounds like when you sent this question in, you were only eating 27 and now you're already up to 3000 calories. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I've been, wow. I've been doing yeah, you're, so. sounds like you're doing really yeah. good. Bro. By the way, I seen your second part of your question that you're following a five by five strong lift resting three that to was. four minutes and your Apple yeah, watch. Right. Go ahead. Um, so yeah, so that, that second question. So I wrote this like back in October. So it's okay. been a while. My program has shifted. I'm on, I'm doing anabolic right now. Oh, good. Um, but still, yeah, so for that second question, um, so when I'm, when I'm resting, like, especially, oh man, when I was doing, like before I did anabolic, I, I was, I did a bunch of higher up stuff just because of the novelty. I was doing a lot of heavy mm -hmm. five by five stuff. And so I wanted to switch it up. Um, but yeah, after doing sets of like 12 to 15, I was gassed, man. Of course. I was so tired after. <laughs> and so. Like before I was listening to you guys, I would just like, I was supersetting everything and just wanted to sweat through the workout. But now I'm like, okay, I need to give my body, my muscles time to recover so I can actually hit these workouts as a skill and do it properly. And so I ended up resting like three, four, five minutes. Um, and I had to like even set timers for myself because I know if I don't do that, I'm just not going to rest as much as I need to. And so I was kind of wondering just when I'm resting for that long, is there anything I can do? That's a little more productive than just like chilling. Yep. <laughs> Stretch or learn, a, learn, learn a new language. I got it. I got an, I got something for you. First off, I'm going to, I'm going to comment Meditate. on something that you didn't just ask. Your Apple watch says you burn four to 500 calories during a, you know, a five by five lifting program. You're not, that's, that's off. People don't burn a lot of calories lifting weight. So it's just one more. One more, you know, thing that shows how off those things can be. All right. Now yeah. let's talk about what you can do between sets. I'm assuming you mean, is there something I can do when I'm resting 
to improve my results, not to be more productive, like a productive per- member of society or something like that. Cause then yeah. like Adam said, you could learn a new language or something. All right. There is, there actually is of all the data that exists, this is going to sound silly, but of all the data that exists, there is one thing you could do while resting that seems to show improved results in terms of muscle connection, muscle fiber activation, which should lead to better results. And it's visualization. It's literally while I'm resting. And what's weird about this, and we used to make fun of this back in the day, old school bodybuilders, Arnold used to talk about this. In between sets, I imagine my biceps growing and I imagine having the biggest arms in the world or when I'm working out my back, when I'm resting, I imagine my laps, my lats blowing up. They did a study on, they've done several studies on this where they have people work out, rest, work out, rest. And they have people work out visualize the muscle contracting and growing and firing and activating the people that visualized had more muscle fiber recruitment and had better connection to the muscle during the exercise. So if you really want to do anything in between sets, whatever you're working on, picture that muscle, imagine it growing and firing and connecting in between sets. That's what the data shows. Now, I've never done it because I, mm. I just, in between sets, my ADD is yeah. like, I'm, I'm rather you can my- paint like Paul check. No, yeah, I, you know? I mean, I, I do this. So when, so I think that one of the most important things is what not to do. I think that what you shouldn't do is a bunch of other things, abs, yeah. core stuff, oh. jumping around. Please don't do that. You shouldn't get on your phone <laughs> and scroll through Instagram. Rubber Tech- band exercises are not resting. Don't be texting your friends. Like, that's what you shouldn't do. One of the best things, I mean, have your music in, my head is down, and I'm thinking about the lift I just did yeah. and the lift I'm about to do. I'm thinking about when I was doing that dumbbell press where my where my shoulders staying back, pinched down and retracted. Was I going slow enough on the like I'm I'm thinking about what I just did and I'm thinking about what I'm about to do yeah. right now. And I'm my I don't want to look at anybody that's in there. My head is down and the music is in my ears. Like I that is the best thing that you can do in that time. And you know what? If you want to. Fo- focus on the breathing that'll help calm the heart rate down faster and maybe prepare you to get back into the set sooner than what so maybe it takes you four minutes right now to recover because your your heart rate's going like crazy and you don't quite have that same endurance you focusing on your breathing will help you get ready faster so you'll be ready to go faster you're focused on the set you just did and what you're about to go do nothing's going to trump that as far as what's going to help maximize your results sweet yeah that's super helpful all cool. right all right man thanks for calling in yeah, thank you guys so much. Go, it, go Warriors. All right. Yep, go Warriors. All right, brother. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And Niners. Hockey yeah. teams? What are those? <laughs> uh, you know, those um it's so it's so it so well highlights the the benefit and the detriment of these devices. Like if you get married to them, not good. If you don't use any tracking at all and don't are are not aware of anything, not good either. Yeah. There's like a nice happy meeting. I mean, I'm, it's a good baseline. I, of of the three of us, I'm the biggest fan of these tools. I love these tools. I just think that a lot of people use them the wrong way. I think they get so hung up on the you know, and, and and I get it because it's a competitive market and each one wants to market themselves as a more accurate yeah. tool to whatever. And it's like none of that shit matters. Well, they they're all accurate enough to show consistency, and that's what you want to see. Like, what's most important is at the end of the month. If he's not seeing the results that he wants, he now has more data. And it doesn't matter that it, the Apple Watch exaggerates that it's 500 calories he burned because it's going to exaggerate every workout by that same percentage. So what he's really looking at when he looks at the end of the month is like, oh, I'm, I'm putting on too much body fat. And then he can go like, and, and based off of my tracking consistently for 30 days that I've been tracking, I'm eating 28 or 3,000 calories. Maybe I need to scale those calories back or maybe I need to take an extra 2,000 steps a day so I, I burn a little bit more calories every single day. So that's how you're using those tools. You're not getting hung up on, oh, that couldn't be right. I didn't take 10,000 steps. I, I only took 4,000. It doesn't matter. What it matters is that you're 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 collecting all this data and then you're using it to like take a bird's eye view of am I moving in the right direction? If so, don't change anything or there's your formula based off of all your tools. Or if you're not seeing the results that you you want, using those tools to adjust calories and movement and things like that based off of that. Our next caller is Stone from North Carolina. Stone, what's up, man? By the way, coolest name I've ever heard in my entire life. That, that's got to be the toughest name I've ever heard. Yeah. That's your middle name, you said? Well, say that again. That's your middle name? It is my middle. Yeah, I go by my middle. So just uh, just told Doug that, but I appreciate it. 
Bro, with, your, with low voice and a name like that, you on the phone with your girl. Yeah. Who is this? Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Who's tough right, right. All right. How can we All help right. you, man? Well, thanks, guys. Well, hey, first, want to just say, hey, it's finally nice to get to see you guys. Not exactly in person, but been listening to y'all for some time now, really since March of this past year. I uh, want to say just thank you for the content. And truly, I think the one word is clarity that you guys provide oh, around uh, a like lot that. of just confusion and um, and just different messages that are out there. I get a lot of clarity from you guys and you've helped me kind of set my goals um, to align more with my family, more with my work schedule, stuff like that. So truly it felt the impact. So I want to say thank y'all for that. Awesome. You got it, man. Brad, thank you. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to get into my question. Um, I'm just going to read how I sent it in and then add some color commentary and sure. feel free to ask me questions if you got any. So, um, questions about injury recovery, mainly, um, why does my body not seem to recover as well as it should, or as well as I think it should from minor injuries? So for context, um, it seems as though my body does not recover as well as it should from minor injuries. I did play football all through high school and college. And when I did play, it seemed that any minor injury or setback from the field or the weight room um, really only took a few days to heal. I could ice, I could heat, take a day off, recover well, be back to normal. Um, nowadays, only a few years removed from that, it seems as though um, any injury I was, I sustain, whether at work, uh, in the weight room, wherever, um, just seems to persist and stay with me and kind of nag, um, despite trying to get after it with rehab, PT, rest, things like that. Um, so it just pretty frustrating. Seems like I'm just kind of accumulating small aches and pains, um, that take a lot of my energy and take time away from training and daily life. Um, so a little about me, I'm 26, almost 27 years old, weight trained really for 12, 13 years or so, um, have a history of injuries from football, mostly also a history of kind of overtraining, um, in my early twenties after football, I eat, um, really well, mostly whole food diet, um, emphasis on protein take a handful of supplements as well as magnesium and salt. I usually walk an average of 10 to 15,000 steps a day. And that's mostly because I work in construction. Um, I'm a construction superintendent. So on my feet, moving around job sites all day long, try to get an average about seven hours of sleep a night. And then training wise, I usually weight train four times a week. Um, with one day in the middle, kind of a mobility, functional fitness day with kettlebell type thing. So that's the little background question. Um, let me know what you guys think or if you got any questions. All right. So Stone, 95% of the time, the reason why somebody notices that suddenly their ability to recover, especially at your age, you're young. Okay. So, uh, you know, age right. can play a role, but not, not even close to it at your age. 95% of the time, there's there's a few factors that are the reason why somebody notices that suddenly it's like, man, you know what? Five years ago I would recover. Now it's like, I can't recover anymore. And they are as follows in order of importance. One is sleep. The data on sleep and injury and recovery is so profound that it puts everything else to shame. Literally. Like if an athlete has a night of bad rest and it can either be not enough hours or it could be bad the quality. right amount of hours is bad quality. The right. rate of injury is like 50% high. It's like ridiculous how much higher the rate of injuries. So sleep is number one. Hydration is number two. Diet is number three. Number four is just your overtraining. Now, the problem with the overtraining one is this is a tough one because it's related the other it. three are related to that, right? So, sure. yeah. So if if your sleep isn't as good as it, as it could be or it's not great, well, then whatever your workout is is just too much type of deal. Same thing with diet. Um, right. and hydration. So you said you try to get seven hours of sleep. What is the reality of what you're actually getting? And are you doing this? Are you, cause you're young, right? Are you doing this where 
Monday through Thursday, you go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. Friday night, you go to bed late, sleep in Saturday, go to bed late, wake up su- later Sunday. Then Monday comes around, you got to wake up early again. Like, is are you doing that? And, and then tell me about the quality of your sleep. Right. No, that's, I mean, that's a great question. I think for the most part, Monday night um, through Thursday night, I mean, it is about seven, seven and a half hours, but that's, I mean, that's clock time, seven, seven and a half. Yeah. I usually do wake up in there when I do wake up, my mind starts racing. Yeah. Usually about work type thing. So I'd tell you, and my wife would tell you that I quality of sleep isn't, uh, it's not a full, just seven hour yeah. knocked out. Um, and then weekends are usually, I usually get more, usually eight hours on the weekend, but might not be going to bed at the same exact time, waking up at the yeah. same time. It's sleep. Yeah. And there's also other things that all play into this too, that a lot of times we don't think about anything that's going to add any sort of extra stress in your life is going to, is, is going to take away from this recovery that we're, we're challenged with right now too. So it could be as simply someone at your age. I don't know how recently you've married. I don't know if you have a kid on the way or not. I don't know if you got a mortgage just recently. Like you, you'd be surprised like how many things like that uh, will add this like low level stress to you all the time. Now, like back when you were 18, you weren't thinking about, Oh my God, I got to make sure I make this to make the bills and to do this. And now you're married and have, you know, a family. And now you have this new responsibility. And we just assume that like, Hey, this is just part of life, but you don't realize that that adds a new layer of stress that you deal with all the time. Then you factor in a couple bad nights of sleep. And then here, there's your, there's your reason right there. It's like, you didn't have that when you were 17 hitting guys on the football field. All you had to do was figure out where the Friday party was and how you're going to get your next meal. That's all you stressed about. So those things do make a difference. Huge and, difference. And, and will. And they'll affect your sleep. Yeah. You know, like you said, you wake up stressed out. Like, uh, what's the difference between you when you were in college and now? You, yeah. Were you married in college? I was not married and uh, did not have a job. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. bro. You're, you're, you're just, listen, you're, you're a young man who's now moving into – uh, being a man. And what I mean by that is you got responsibility now. When you're a young man, you have no responsibility. Yeah, you play football, you go to class. It's not the same. You know that, right? Now you're responsible. You got sure. a job. You might have employees. You got a wife. You, you, you know, Maybe you guys are planning to have a kid at some point if you don't now. It's totally different. And so you might not be getting like horrible sleep, but you might be getting chronically not great sleep. And what's what's great about uh, what's what is positive about this this whole situation is that I mean you mentioned earlier that you 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 figured out that you were probably overtraining a lot in your early twenties. Even you're just now right. you've now reached a point now where uh, you ain't gonna get away with it. it. Your body's telling you, and so you, we have to start to adjust the the intensity, the amount of volume, the way you train. Uh, has to really start to adjust to your did, current lifestyle. Did you listen to our podcast with Dr. Parsley? Uh, Dr. Parsley, that's the he's the SEAL doctor, yes. right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm about I'm about halfway through it. Okay. So check out his book. Yeah. He's very, like very applicable. Oh, it's very for somebody like you, perfect. But just like off the top of my head, okay, just a few things you could do. Yeah. You want at least eight hours of clock time because it probably takes you 30 minutes to, to really fall asleep anyway. So not seven hours of clock time, eight hours right. of clock time. So do that. An hour before, no electronics, okay? That makes a big difference. If you do watch electronics, oh, yeah. use blue light blocking glasses. Um, you can use something on your bed like eight sleep. That'll make a big difference. You could try mouth tape. For a lot of young men, especially guys who are who've got a decent amount of muscle, you played football. I'm imagining you probably. Does your wife ever say you snore? Uh, she sleeps so hard that she'd have no idea. So <laughs> I might. Okay, mouth tape. Mouth tape is like it's so it's super cheap on Amazon. You can get it like it's super cheap. You tape your face your face shut. You go to sleep. It actually, right. I mean, the data shows makes a difference. And then go to bed at the same time. Wake up at the same time every day. Do that for two weeks. Yeah. If you okay. don't notice a profound difference, then it's something else. But I'll bet you every program that we have that you'll notice a profound difference if you're consistent with that for two weeks. For sure. Yeah. What, well, what, I mean, go ahead. What what programs do you have of ours? Um, just Prime Pro. Um, and I mostly got that like right after I started listening. And I mean, truly has helped. I Most of my training days, I spend about 15 to 20 minutes priming with that program before lifting. Yeah. So that's all I got. And it really does help. Yeah. I would, I would either throw you uh maps 15 or anabolic as a, a, a good program to, pro- for you to-, to program in the meantime. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
So okay. I'll, awesome. I'll have Doug send over MAPS Anabolic. Follow that with what you're doing with the priming already. If you still feel like you're having a tough time recovering, you're not seeing good progress, you're not getting stronger, then I might advise you to go to MAPS 15 because it might. we just may yeah. need to pull back on the, the overall yeah. stress. One more thing you can add, uh, Ned. We work with a company called Ned. They have something called Mellow. Uh, it's, it's one of the best. It's not uh, like a sleep aid, like it makes you drowsy, your body gets used to it. It just gives your body... Uh, nutrients that tend to help with sleep. Very, it's an inexpensive product. You drink it right before you go to bed. A lot of people notice a bit. So that's an, that's a product you could try. It's not going to be a substitute though for what I said earlier. Like literally right. just give it two weeks. Just be, okay, you know, tell your wife, listen, we're going to go to, I got to go to bed this time. I do this for two weeks. I'm not going to stay up late. And then you should notice profound in two weeks. You should be like, okay, I feel way different. Then you know it was right. asleep. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, I mean, I know a lot of people say it sometimes, but they call and they almost know what your answer is going to be. <laughs> uh, so I, I was, I was thinking that in the back of my head, but I, I mean, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, but it was good to, good to hear that. So I appreciate the, uh, the tips for that. You got it, man. All right, Stone, we're going to send over that program too. Okay. All right. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Take it easy, it. man. All right. See y'all. You know what the challenge is for, um, it's a bit for, especially for young men, right? Well, he's a 38 year old stuck in a 26 year old. Well, you say, what? Look, I got married young too. Like, you, 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 I know it's, he's it's very like mature. You yeah. get married, and then what happens is because you know, men, we're just like they're like this either because we're raised this way or because it's part of our you know our DNA. We don't say nothing. We just go. Oh, I'm tired, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do this, and then you just start noticing stuff like, why do I feel like shit? Right? Why does my back hurt all of a sudden? And then you just say to yourself like, oh, I guess I'm just getting older. This is a part of it. No, it's like you're, the responsibilities on your shoulders have just quadrupled. Yeah. That's going to affect a lot of things. accounted for those big shifts in your life. Totally. You know? 100%. Yeah. Look, if you like our show, do this. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our free fitness stuff. We have a lot there that can help you out. It's totally free. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 